I click to record. Good day, brother Casey. It's a pleasure to have you with us. Pleasure We're very is mine. grateful for your presence. Uh, if any of you listening don't know this wonderful man, he is uh, found under the Vegetable Police on YouTube. And any type of links or affiliates we will put in the comments and you'll be able to find him. And if you don't know who we are, I'm Josh and this is Michelle X. We have a YouTube channel called Josh X and a wonderful website, xfamunity.com. So firstly, brother, how are you today? I am doing well. I'm feeling good. About a month and a half now, raw vegan, mostly raw vegan, totally vegan. But yeah, it's my return back and it feels good. I've always wanted to come back here. I got stuck in the carnivore way for a bit, but I have returned to the light. <laughs> Very good to see. Very good to see. And I think one of the most important things that impress us about you is you take your own individual journey from information that you seek and apply it and and kind of find out what it does to your system and your body. And me and Michelle have also done a very similar thing, you know, a massive food evolution and in a standing from very young until this point in life. And we help people reverse diseases, find balance within their body, their mind, their spirit, and also teach some wonderful synchronizations with life to make it seem magnificent. So firstly, I know that there's going to be many questions from people out there regarding this type of lifestyle. Some people aren't thriving. Some people are. Is it right for me? Is it right for them? I also wrote down some points here that maybe if you're interested, we could touch, which were, uh, you know, the Amiga fats, um, touch distilled water, the studies mm -hmm. that show fructose is bad, colon cleansing, gallbladder cleansing, maybe touch garlic, onion, and chili, because I know this is quite a touchy subject for some. Mm -hmm. And there is some light to be shed there. Digestive enzymes, mm -hmm. building muscle, the protein myth, fortification, B12, water fasting, juice fasting, and possibly touch on, you know, urine therapy, and then maybe go into the, the food system, like grains, legumes, nuts, seeds, and fruits, vegetables, and which is best, and go from there. But please, uh, you take it away. If could we start with um, the reason why you, so you know, you went down this vegan kind of raw food uh, journey and then the switch happened. Um, I know that you said you kind of went to Thailand to uh, experience all of this fruit and it kind of happened the opposite way. So could we touch initially on your journey to from like veganism to uh, the carnival uh, side and, and why maybe you decided to take that journey? Yeah, so I started out just looking. I had, basically, I was just sleepwalking my way through life for the first 26 years or so, and I ended up really sick, and I'm like, what's going on here? And I actually was bleeding in my gut, and I was went and got tested by doctors, and they're like, you have ulcerative colitis, and they were doing a colonoscopy and I was like relieved. I was like, oh, thank God you guys know what it is. You can fix me. And they're like, yeah, you'll be on medication for the rest of your life. And eventually we'll probably remove your colon. And I was like, well, what do I eat to heal this? And I'm like, oh, diet has nothing to do with it. Don't worry. Just eat whatever you want. There's a McDonald's downstairs. Just go visit that. I'm like, yeah. what are you talking? And that was my first moment where I like woke up because doctors were the authority to me at that point they were the best like you go see a doctor if you're sick and I realized they don't know what they're talking about when it comes to, like how can a digestive illness have nothing to do with food it has everything to do with food I mean there's mental causes I'm sure but so that just led me on this path of like, what's the diet? And I just kept trying all these different things and getting myself in trouble. And it took me, I think, six years to find the raw vegan diet. It was David Klein's book. 
self-healing colitis and Crohn's. And I remember searching one last time on the internet because I was searching so much. And my mom was like, oh my God, you're still looking at diets? Like I was like a madman searching and I just, I wasn't finding the answers. And then I remember just being exhausted. I'm like, one more time, all right, how to heal colitis. And I'm looking through and then I see this link that I've never seen before. And it was from David Klein and it was this fruit-based diet and he had healed, he heals 99.9% .9 of everybody who's had this illness. I'm like, really? And so he had a book, I ordered it and I'm just looking online, like what's his diet before the book came? Cause it was going to be a couple of weeks and it was a fruit-based diet, mostly fruit. So I was like, really? And so like at this point, <clears throat> I'm like, binging on anything i'm just starving all the time and i'm eating fast food i had i lived next to a cookie factory i had this like i would buy a garbage bag full of cookies because they were like crumbled and cheap it was like five dollars and i'm sitting there just watching and eating cookies till i'm so full and i just i could not satiate myself and then I remember like just overeating. Sometimes I would throw up from it because I'm just like, oh my God, what did I do? Like an entire pizza and just so much salt and I'm so thirsty. And so I get my first cantaloupe. I had half a cantaloupe and I was satisfied for the first time in my life, I think. And I was like, what's happening? I don't want to eat anymore. So it was just so strange. And so like I just started healing and I got off all medication I remember getting, I just started to wean down because I was taking these pharmaceutical meds for uh, like six years, a lot. And I was scared to come off them. And so I just started weaning down. And then one night I was like, I'm done with this. Like I got his book. He was saying, your meds are keeping you from healing. They're toxic. And I'm like, oh my God. So I just stopped it one night. I got a fever. I was just laying in bed watching TV and I just got so cold. All of a sudden, within 10 seconds, I was unbelievably freezing and I'm shivering and I got a fever and I was sweating, fell asleep and felt great the next day. So I just continued on this fruit path and it was just the struggle. Like I was healing my gut, but I had all these food addictions still. And so like, I didn't want to be a raw vegan. I wanted to be raw vegan to heal and then go back to eating whatever I wanted. And so I just kept doing that and I would eat fruit and then want to cheat and then suffer the consequences. And it was years of that. Just like, why can't I eat what I used to eat? I have all this comfort food from my youth that I remember eating. And I was like, I want to eat that still. And then it took a long time for, it was 2012 when I was eating this raw sheep cheese and I got another colitis flare up from it. And I was like, I finally connected dairy to being what's causing my colitis this whole time. And so once I gave that, I was like, okay, enough of this. I'm going all over the place. I'm wanting to eat all these foods. Let's go vegan. Let's just do this. And that's when my healing started. And I just, I never felt like I fully healed. Like I still had skin issues and some bloating here and there. And like I was off meds, I felt pretty good, but, and I was always looking online and that's what kind of led me to being curious about these carnivores. Cause I would see people eating that way and they're not suffering with the things I'm still suffering with and they have perfect skin. And I'm like, what's going on here? Like I, I thought vegan, you cleanse out and you get healthy. So that's really what, got me curious and that's funny because I moved to Thailand for the fruit and I ended up being a coffee drinking meat eater I was like how how did I turn to that <laughs> just eating nothing but restaurant food so <laughs> it was really just my seeing other YouTubers being healthier than me got me curious to eating meat and so I did try that <laughs> for a long time but it just wasn't aligning with me like I go out and film wildlife photography and I appreciate the beauty of these animals and then I'm gonna go home and eat another animal like it just it never felt right and so like now I want to be vegan finally it wasn't just to heal the body it's I love animals and I think it's healthy and 
So yeah, and I'm thriving pretty much, but still have some issues. And that's what I'd like to discover today and why a lot of my audience still have tried the raw vegan diet and it wasn't working for them too. And so hopefully today we can find out some things, <laughs> some tricks. Yeah, I think there's a few um, a few key things to point during your wonderful speeches. The key to the beginning of any type of health is removing everything done by somebody else. And then beginning on the food journey of a whole food diet. I think even if there's people out there that choose to eat meat, we're not here to try to take anyone away from the diet. We're here to just present what we found on our journey to be the the ultimate truth for ourselves. You know, so when people are transitioning from a Western diet into this whole food lifestyle, there's one thing that most people miss in this that most Western food is fortified. So when you're removing yourself of that, you're missing the fortification, which has come from, let's say, breakfast cereals, your milk, your dairy, your eggs, your, your, your meat, etc., and you come to a point of purity when we're eating food that's grown by a commercial company with deficient soil. So then after a period of time when these run out, we begin to feel like we're not in balance anymore. And this is the beginning stages of where people start to fail. You know, have you got anything to say on that one? That's, that's really, you know, sums it all up. Mm. Because when the chemicals that are... Um, injected or put into these foods are removed also from the diet you have like a form of die-off also so it would be that that bacteria that for the you know inside the body that is used to help break down the foods that you've been ingesting over all that time are now having nowhere to get or nothing to feed off of so it's also a fact of the illness or the the detox stage that you sometimes mention in some of your videos is a, a stage where you know you have to go through that to eliminate all of those things that have built up in your body over that amount of time because those beings that will have you know 20 30 years of eating a standard western diet and then all of a sudden decide, actually, I might just be a raw vegan or try it. So all of this crash happens in the body, which is why we try to promote a transitional period of, right, we'll help you slowly introduce some of these foods whilst removing some of the main causes of the problem. So, um, for instance, we were speaking earlier about uh, the dairy that was affecting you quite heavily. So you would initially try to remove that slowly and then substitute it with more of the nutrient dense foods such as your green juices and some of your juices so that you could get that amount of nutrients in and then trying to do it on a slower rate because also with the amount of food that you were eating you were crashing into the body such as the the cookies and stuff like that you will have um you know, so many different bacteria that are built up to try and help with them. What flushes it out of your system? You know, let's say the lymphatic system, mm -hmm. there's a buildup and then you have issues with the liver and the kidneys. And then this is why there's so much importance to actually transitioning yourself slowly to experience the benefits of evolution with the food. You know, logically, um, if we sit down and we go off what's natural to us, do we have any instinct to catch, kill, chase, run, respond to any type of animal in our environment? I want to film them. I want to yeah. pet them. I want to yeah. feed them. I want to be like their caretaker. I just like, oh, how can I help you? That's what I think. And I think that's what most humans think. And I guess there's some people who have been raised with a a hunting father yeah. and it becomes normal to them but that's pretty rare and yeah it's, it's not removing the instinct it's, yeah there. it's there's, there's no instinctual behavior towards picking up a rifle and and you know hunting or with the natural body do we have an ability to actually hunt i mean could we catch a rabbit could we catch a bird without any tools I can't even get close enough to film one from 40 <laughs> yards away. Like, no, probably not. 
yeah. But the the instincts are there, but also if you take the the senses that we have, the smell, the sight, the touch, the hearing, none of it is responsive to killing an animal. Sugar not only is addictive because of how it's made and it creates candida and feeds it within the body, it's because it tastes good because sweet things is naturally how we tend to you know find our food. And we're taught that sugar, uh, we say sugar is the same across board, whether you get it from white sugar, coconut sugar or fruit. And if we are investigative enough, we can look at the studies and you'll find that any study saying fructose is bad is based on high fructose corn syrup. And we have a lot of these uh, carnivore doctors that are promoting you know, this type of lifestyle with the meat. And they tell you to go and look at these studies, but they don't realize there's a high processed corn syrup, which is actually toxic to the body. The body doesn't recognize it. Thus, it needs a new type of bacteria, fungus, to, to consume it within the body. And then this will turn eventually onto the body. And another thing, as we just passed it, was within the lymphatic system, as you're healing, certain viruses, fungus, and bacteria actually store their cells in lymph nodes or in the lymph area to then later on reproduce. This is why like Epstein-Barr virus or hepatitis, AIDS, and these type of illnesses, they can resurface. You know, herpes goes away, lays dormant, and then resurfaces because it just hides away. So there is a method to healing really deep at a cellular level. But I think the first thing that we need to recognize is what's our original food source. So let's take a look at you on a day out. You went for a nice hike to take some pictures. It was hot, middle of summer. You got stuck on the edge of a mountain. And you were there for two, three days till you got rescued. You came to our house and we had a big table. And we cut up some meat for you. And just as it is, you know, the belly fat, the hairs, the blood, some organs. Then we laid out some nuts, some seeds, some legumes, some vegetables watermelons papayas mangoes uh, what would you choose in your thirst and hunger it's always the fruits when i'm fasting it's like i'm really desiring those watermelons the hydration because that's what makes fruit so perfect in my mind it's it's everything it's all levels it's hydration it's nourishment it's energy it's fast eliminating like it's it's everything you crave, like anybody, because I go through moments where I've had enough sweet, it feels like, and my body, we'll get into that, like, why do we crave these savory foods sometimes? But it's always that when you've been without food, sweet is the thing you want. That's Definitely. Right. You know, when, yeah. when you want something whole, you want something to be hydrating, satiating, and if we go to the fruit quickly, the words kind of speaks to you with this for you it, you know, for you it. And it bears the seed. Any type of obvious reproduction of life, it needs to contain a seed to then be reproduced. And in perfection, if the earth was in a homeostasis, we would be consuming this fruit in a, in a warm environment with lovely moist soil. And we would poo into the soil and these seeds would then be able to reproduce now our body's preferred energy source is glucose it uses glucose for every function within the body so we want to get the closest thing to this form of energy for the least resistance within our body so you know we say everybody can live happily and healthily on a whole food plant-based diet even if people choose to consume meat you're going to live a long happy life if you get your meat sourced perfectly from somewhere that has grass-fed beef for example but if you're trying to heal it's a totally different story you know when you go for grains nuts and seeds and things like rice for the body to convert this into an easily a simulated source of food there's slight acidity within the body so it has to bring mechanisms in to make this a fuel as you go to fruits uh, as you go to vegetables there's a similar thing a lot of people on a raw food diet they tend to eat vegetables raw mm -hmm. which i don't think or feel is the best thing to do but juicing them has a huge benefit because 
you're getting the nutrients from them but without the huge amount of fiber that it contains so it's not difficult for your body to process that so it just goes into the small intestine gets absorbed really quickly which is what we need the nutrient dense uh, juice but without uh, that amount of fiber and this is why a lot of raw vegans suffer with the gas and the bloating because they're eating it because they think the fiber yeah is going to be great for me to push through but the amount that you need to fill yourself up and the coarseness of it is having an effect on the bloating of your tummy. It feels like you've got cramping going on. You'll have, the gas. You'll have inflammation. Yeah. You'll have distended stomach feeling, but pushing out and gas will develop. So juicing those um, veggies, the green veggies, is a really good idea because you're not getting the fiber attached to them so much. And then once your gut is healed, you can reintroduce little bits at a time with with no problem at all but it it takes a while for the inflammation to decrease and for you to see a difference with the bloating and the gas and then also um i was just going to touch a little bit on the initial stage of digestion is the saliva um, that we produce and if we're not chewing our food enough um, and we're talking whilst we're eating and stuff like that and not having that you know intention on our food we are having like a stage back again because we're not creating that saliva the small pieces of food that need to go down the tubes into the stomach to be digested easily we're just having like a few chews and then a swallow you're missing out on the digestive enzyme process so we really need that 42 chews is what you should have for an average you know mouth full of food mm -hmm. but you see a lot of people that are eating the standard western diets like the mcdonald's and, and stuff like that who are biting a couple of chews and just swallowing because they're super hungry they want to get that fix of high fat high sugar volume really quickly and it's called fast food for a reason because it's all fast the process that's happening within them so that chewing is really important and also not how not overloading the body so even when we speak about vegetables <clears throat> excuse me not having too much of a huge portion so that the body can't cope with the processing with fruit it's kind of different because it's easy assimilated so the assimilation process is really quick whereas the vegetables and then we go on to the legumes and then the standard western diet with the chemicals it's very much uh an intense process mm. that happens on the body which is why everyone's like okay i'll have a little rest now instead of feeling vibrant and full of energy when we have the juices or the fruit which is a really quick source of energy like you know those simple sugars and and that's what the body craves for a high boost of energy is when you when you want a really quick uh get up and go it's like a juice or a, a bit of fruit and that will give you that energy yeah. for that time so those kind of things are really important when we're looking at inflammation Okay. Yeah, there's a couple questions I had in there that tie into this. And one one is um I used to get very tired after fruit meals. And it was now I don't feel that so much. There's the odd time if I like eat way too much and dried fruit, I'll still get a bit fatigued. But usually now I finally feel like I've reached a place where like I eat a fruit meal, I'm energized. I can just go. Whereas in the beginning, I just remember so many times having these banana smoothies and I drink it and I, I have a nap after like I it knocks me right out. Mm -hmm. So like, I think that's what turns a lot of people off. It's the sugar metabolism and the blood sugar roller coasters. And do you have tips to regulate that? I mean, did you find this on a pure fruit or were you still consuming any source of fats at the time? I was probably consuming all kinds of things at dinner. Like I was always confused about what dinner is supposed to be because I, I've, I've been eating fruit all day and it's sweet. It's funny now I can have my fruit dinner and it's I'm craving it. I want it, but I do still have savory things like the zucchini noodles. I'm trying to keep it fruitarian and not too much vegetables. So it's just like tomatoes, zucchini. And it's kind of nice to have a savory thing, but. Mm -hmm. Now I feel like fruit is fine for dinner and it digests well. But in the past, I was always confused. Do I want a high fat raw dinner or a cooked starchy dinner? I want something different. <laughs> what do you think dinner wise? I think with, with, with the fat situation is when you're having glucose into the bloodstream, glucose needs 
like insulin to deal with it so fat in the bloodstream causes a resistance with this insulin so then the body wants to produce more glucose from stored glucose or glycogen and then insulin rises again and this causes more resistance um, I feel for, you know, a, a wonderful evening meal for somebody who's trying to heal or continue to heal, or how would you say your outlook is for the dinner you want to consume? Well, I'm personally, I'm looking for like, what's the optimal for health and longevity, but also some people do like tasty things. Not everybody wants every meal to be the perfect health. Like we some of us want to have fun still and it's just always been the debate like what's a savory dinner yeah. that's not sweet when you're it's kind of different we, we sort of it's two categories really because if you've got a chronic illness and you're trying to heal it's really different it would look really different to a, a food system that would we would offer for someone that was in a, a healthy position so not trying to heal but just want to continue and maintain that mm -hmm. would look very different from a healing protocol because fruit is the fastest assimilation through the body mm -hmm. we recommend that for healing as much as you can um, and and if it was to be savory it would be more like um, the cucumber uh, side of things and um, maybe sort of you know the avocado is kind of separate but with a, a full plant-based diet, which we offer as optimum, um, we would include some cooked foods yeah. and different types of foods where we would say, um, okay, legumes are fine if you're not trying to heal because they still offer that benefit. Who wants to sit but, on a fruit-based diet really in the masses? You know, it's very rare to find somebody who attunes themselves to strictly fruit. And we were, we, we transitioned ourselves through many. So we moved our way to like a whole fruit diet and we spent years on it. And then we added in some small things and we sat there very nicely. And then we go through cycles of fasting and then we don't, and we just continue this through the year. So if I was saying you wish to be raw, I would say, don't limit yourself, you know, too much. Cause you can create such an idea in the mind that everything has to be perfect. You tend to suffer with the thoughts. Should I, shouldn't I, can I, can't I wish I did wish I didn't. And this is no good either. But for an evening meal, when you did your, your noodles the other day, I would suggest buying a spiralizer that does things a bit quicker. Cause you get a sore wrist. <laughs> yeah. That's a well, workout. You can spiralize anything. So your cucumbers, you can spiralize your courgettes. You could also spiralize squash or zucchini, uh, sorry, squash or pumpkin type of thing. And make yourself a sauce. And in that sauce, you can put anything you like. So if you wanted to go for an Indian takeaway type flavor, you could put a few tomatoes in. You could put some coconut in there, a tiny bit of lemon juice, some uh, cilantro or coriander, maybe four dates, a bit of mango, some salt, some black pepper, turmeric, ginger if you wish, blend it up. And then pour that over your noodles and you got yourself a very high dense calorie dinner that's going to satiate you and also not be very uh, acid forming within your system. So I think learning the craft of you know raw foodism is a, is a thing that will help you thrive. But also, if you're looking for vegetables in your diet, just lightly steam them. You know, you can lightly steam cucumbers, uh, sorry, lightly steam some carrots, some broccoli. Uh, and you can mix this in with some mushrooms and put that to your curry or, you know, I just say if you're healing, you just have to know that the, the food system is eventually going to lead you to fruit fasting and you'll find mm -hmm. yourself in a, in a health healing way. Moving on from that, you know, you're best off just predominantly staying 70% raw with fruit and then incorporating some other dense foods, especially when you live you're in cold climates like we do yeah okay so i'm curious because a lot of raw vegans end up with the big salad that seems to be the main thing and it's tons of vegetables and how are they getting away with that like because i don't know it seems like digestively that's a challenge and mm. all these leafy greens and i know some people are doing two big salads a day I forget her name lisa's raw food romance or something she's like on a, like a fruit meal and then two giant salads and it's mostly vegetables 
Mm-hmm. How are they getting away with that? We, we, not, we yeah. experienced that. We know? did, but um, I was probably yeah. I d- I didn't feel I didn't feel tired from it, but I did feel quite full, as in like but not bloated, but just like slightly full. distended in a small amount of inflammation yeah. that you can feel inside you. Especially feel this with kale. You know, if you eat kale even on its own, and mm-hmm. um, and what we did is we. We ate the simplest forms of food and we got ourselves very, very, very acutely sensitive. And then we introduced things one by one and felt them. And this is how we came to such a point where we could really understand what foods were really for us and what foods aren't. So I don't really recommend you know greens. If you are going to have greens, you should just juice them. If you eat greens, then steam them slightly. It allows them to be digested a little bit better. Um, but a lot of these small greens and vines that go in the garden work well for the soil you know like legumes they put nitrogen into the soil so then they work well with fruit trees as you're growing crops etc but as a staple that keeps people you know satiated across the masses where fruit doesn't grow year round the grains and things have been introduced for everyone to survive really to introduce them at a, a smaller rate because i see when people transition back into cooked food they have like a huge uh, portion size and the body then can't process that so it's about introducing a very small amount and then going from there and just into building up the ability to digest digest it because you think the enzymes aren't there well if you've been on a high fruit raw uh, diet and then you go to like cooked legumes for instance or digestive enzymes won't be there we also say you have like an acidic crash that you Mm. feel you feel almost flu-like symptoms because your your body's recognizing something is very different almost toxic so then it goes through the lymphatic system you start to feel sore throat headache and and unwell and you know having a raw food system and being abstained from nuts you have some nuts and you eat them obsessively or excessively you feel it if you have raw food and you go to potatoes you feel it you know if you have abstained from garlic and onion and chilies and you eat them, you'll feel it very much. Mm-hmm. You know, very, yeah. very much. I felt it when, as soon as I eliminated meat about two or one and a half months ago, I got a flu. And I feel like that was detox. He, my body was like, okay, he finally got rid of it. And I feel like he's not going back. Let's get rid of this stuff. And it was a very noticeable detox. Like my skin freaked out really bad for about a week and a half. And I was, I just waded through it and I felt like I overcame that. But I, I do want to talk about detox. Like when I feel like that's maybe the most overused word in the raw vegan community, like every little health symptom. Oh, it's just detox, bro. Don't worry about it. And like, I feel like if I eat too many pineapples, I get blisters on my lips. Like it's yeah. too powerful. It's I'm not detoxing something out of my lips. Oh, I just need more pineapple enzymes to pull this last bit out of my lips. Mm-hmm. Like it's no, that fruit was very acidic. It wasn't ripe and it's hurting me. Mm-hmm. And so like, how do we know what's detox and how, or if it's caused by certain fruits or like a reaction to unripe fruits, how do we navigate that? the journey is so individual so most people have such as yourself have to navigate their self and really feel what's going on inside their body to recognize these things so detox is naturally going to happen when you remove yourself from any type of toxin or you move towards a fast or you have fruit lighter within your system but it shouldn't be a continual thing and a lot of people who are trying to heal themselves find themselves in a perpetual state of detox that's where i am (laughs) <laughs> yeah and and like i was speaking about earlier some things hide themselves in lymphatics so they reoccur and try to survive through the body and if they get a small amount of fuel they'll just continue and then they'll die and, and store their self so a question that i had for you just before this was how long have you only ever eaten fruit for example or, or whole foods without anything like protein powder kombucha anything other than the source itself and what you created not long enough really because like most of my journey was 
more of a raw till four type of thing and a cook dinner or some periods I would go like two weeks and then I'm like dying. I'm like, I, I need something potatoes. Oh, thank God. Mm-hmm. And so like, it's never been this long, like one month, nothing but oranges. I've done a bunch of like, I remember doing a four day grape fast after reading the grape cure and I was going to go 30 days, but my teeth were so sensitive after eating grapes, I had to stop. I was like, I'm going to melt my teeth away. Like something, we'll get into that. That was one of my questions later because a lot of people have the sensitive teeth on raw food. But to answer your question, it's never been more than like two weeks at a time. I've done several things. I mean, I did the 90 day juice fast, but that was with some vegetables too. But you didn't incorporate any, when you were doing that, did you have any protein powder? Nothing. 90 day juice, nothing Just but juice. juice. No how did supplements. You feel, how did you feel there then? It was incredible for the first 54 days. Amazing. I was like more energy than ever. I was still working out. I felt like I was gaining strength, although I was losing size. It was great. And then day 54, I remember I just, I got fatigued and like super depressed. And I just pushed through it because I had 90 days in my mind, but I, mm-hmm. I something went downhill and I'm, I'm not sure what happened there. But So did you, during that journey, ever get any blood work done? No, I did not. No. Have you recently at all? No, I. it's been a long time since I've got any blood tests. Yeah, because a lot of issues or perceived issues can start from two two main things or maybe we say three and one is iodine deficiency one is b12 and one is vitamin d now lacking in vitamin d can cause the onsets of perceived depression vitamin d is actually a pro hormone so it creates hormones and it regulates so many functions within the body so having a low vitamin d can have this onset of a multiple amount of uh, things such as teeth issues because it stops the body's ability to absorb calcium which is hard to then regenerate and you know make teeth feel better and also degenerates them so i was done here as well that you had a water fast didn't you and you broke it with the four eggs yeah was... Where did you get this information from? Because I was carnivore leading into that water fast. Okay. And leading up to it, I had eaten nothing but raw lamb meat for two weeks. And I was like, my skin finally cleared up. And I was like, that's the secret, raw lamb. But it was really hurting my gut, <laughs> this raw meat. It was like, I don't know if it was the bacteria or parasites, but it was really painful. And I was like, okay, I just need to water fast, heal the gut, and then I'm going to go back to this raw meat thing. And so I had the idea to, I wanted to break it with a keto diet. I didn't want to introduce sugars back. And so I do this 21 day water fast and I'm like, Celery juice or <laughs> coconut, coconut yeah. water is the best uh, way to get the electrolytes back into the mm. body after the water fast. But um. Yeah, how did that go down? Yeah, wasn't it? Yeah. It was not only like you're 21 days with no food and you're like, okay, it's time to eat raw egg. All right. And I, I like sip on it. I'm like, that is gross, man. That is not what I was hoping for. And like, apparently people have done it. I did do some research like, oh, yeah, I break my fast with raw eggs all the time. No problem. I so. It. I got so tired and depressed after one egg. I was like, wow. And yeah, I ended up in the emergency room. I just, this pain in my ileocecal valve area just started to build and build as I'm eating eggs. And then like I had this aged meat that was in my fridge from before the fast started. I'm sorry, vegans, for grossing you out. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to have some chicken hearts too and... They'd been there for two weeks and I'm like, okay, that hurts. Ow. And the pain just started building and I started panicking. I was like, okay, what's going on? I did like a castor oil flush. I was like, okay. <laughs> and then that's just sitting there and I'm like, 
I'm going to die if I don't go to the emergency room. Mm -hmm. And so I just went downstairs and there was like, it was after midnight, I think at that point, and there's a security guard there, a Thai guy. And I'm like, ambulance, he doesn't speak English. And I'm like, translating on my phone, ambulance. (laughs) And they picked me up and it was a, an ordeal that almost ended me. The whole night was sharp stabbing pain that did not relent. And then I made it out. I, signed this waiver like they wanted to take my appendix out and i was like no i'm not having surgery in thailand (laughs) that's not happening for many many years they said that that was a useless organ didn't they yeah i was like i don't believe that i think i know do you know what it does it it basically stores the gut microbiome in them and it helps it release it back in to cultivate the gut So it kind of stores bacteria that you need for a healthy digestion. I have heard that. So when it drops, yeah, it gives you a little bit in there. But once, when you were pure from your water fast, what you eat after that is should be the food that you know is right for the body. Yeah, but um, you know when you yeah, if meat was if meat was so good for you, I don't think I would have ended up in an emergency room no. after breaking it. you went from because... pure wrist. Yeah. Pure wrist, and then you would move into the a source of fuel to be the next pure wrist. But as you're, as you're switching from ketosis back into using glucose, you, you have to just be careful about the amount you introduce, and you go slow and steady with it. But breaking your fast with something like a papaya would have been probably most beneficial for you. I would have said, you know, and if you wanted to remain in ketosis, then I would say just juice some cucumbers and some celery and keep it very low in glucose or sugar content. Um, but that must have been a terrible time for you. And that leads me to say the B12. So when people start feeling terrible, because B12 regulates the nervous system, it regulates digestion, and just so many things within our body. If this is low, symptoms will arise, such as first fatigue. You know, you'll feel very tired. You may have felt tired during your fruit time because you had low levels of B12. And even though the meat does contain B12, very low levels can get absorbed in our body. But you may have just been floating with the amount you were getting from it. But all of the meat and dairy industry are fortified. So I think is it 80 or 90 percent? 80? 90 percent of supplements are given to animals livestock what we eat the b12 yeah but um you know that if we are low in b12 we're only getting a secondary form of b12 that the animals already created within them so the supplementation from its um raw form would be to go and get a supplement rather than having the supplement that the animal has had and ingested and having it through that way. Same with um, food. It, exactly yeah. the same with food. But, you know, getting tested, getting blood work done is a really important part of any healing journey. So we would 100% recommend that you or anyone who's listening would get some uh, blood work done. Mm. And then at least you can see what areas need a little bit of attention because if it's um say for instance vitamin d um you know in a lot a lot of countries the winter time is you know awful for from october to march in the in UK, uk you can't absorb any vitamin d so you know that's, well, that's true even if you're out in the sun it's just the wrong angle and you can't it's the wrong angle yeah so the supplementation through the winter months of countries like the uk um, would be recommended if you are on a borderline level or quite low in that because you will experience symptoms that are close to detox symptoms that you have experienced um, especially like journey, so. pain in the teeth, teeth you know yeah. bleeding gums mm-hmm. things and depression tiredness yeah. and you're not sure why but you can't put a finger on it and this is where b12 for people who are carnivore they really enjoy the 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 B12 aspect of the meat, you the know, power that it brings all, with that. All B12 is actually synthesized in the soil. It you have to have cobalt, and there's a bacteria which feed on cobalt that then synthesize B12, and it should be found in plants. And then this would be ingested perfectly. But we have a, a massive uh, deficiency of cobalt in the commercial world, 
And when we look at cows, for example, because people who work with cows will say that they're not supplemented with B12. Most people don't go into these depths, but they're supplemented with cobalt. And their rumen, which is their stomachs, they actually produce B12 in there from this cobalt. So their food is synthesized with cobalt. But which is why also with the grass-fed animals, um, in their feces, as they kind of poo it out, they'll be walking the feces into the soil and therefore gaining that B12 back from what they've produced through the earth. So we need to look at like soil types, um, the nutrients that have been deficient in the soil. This is why our fruit that's grown is quite deficient because it's grown on a commercial level from the supermarkets. It's been you know, sprayed and, and everything. So we wash it more, we peel it. So we're not getting that old form of B12, number one, from the soil, and number two, because we're cleaning it so relentlessly and peeling it, we're not getting those forms of rich nutrient density because we're we're doing all of those things that may not have happened, you know, 100 years ago when they weren't deficient in all of these um, rich yeah. minerals. But you look back 100 years ago, let's say we were living somewhere more temperate temperate which is kind of in balance with the hot and cold day and night fruit grows well there but from commercially we have been scattered and we're living in places that aren't necessarily you know perfectly balanced for living outside naked in harmony with the earth you know so we're we are lacking elements just in that process we see that the commercial world is given us these foods to keep us alive which is wonderful we have nothing against uh, this commercial food and the clothing the clothing covers up the whole body uh, so we haven't got access to that vitamin d you know the skin is the biggest organ in the body and that's how we absorb all of our um, vitamin d through mm. the skin exposure doctors recommend sorry i'm sorry karen doctors recommend you to take 400 iu of vitamin d supplementation through the winter periods now, your body absorbs 10% of this, so 90% is remedied useless, so 40 IU you would be getting. Now, one to two hours in the sunshine, full body, you get around 20,000 IU. Okay, so if you're trying to remedy a vitamin D deficiency or even chronic ailments or chronic illnesses, mega dose in vitamin D has been proven to be very beneficial to actually stop autoimmune diseases without changing diet as well. So a good thing to look at would be your vitamin D and your vitamin B. Iodine is another one which regulates thyroid and hormone control, which could be causing some spots and things like this. So we always uh, share with our family, the ex-fam, that we make a kombu. Uh, and we boil it, boil kombu, which is a seaweed, which is very high in iodine. We boil it and put it in ice cubes. And then we have an ice cube each a day. And we've seen people with uh, thyroid diseases like goiters, you know, a goiter. Yeah. And start taking this combo and it just goes down. So it's um like kombu, like the seaweed or Irish sea moss. It's got so many minerals in it. And also, like if you're at or close to a beach and you submerge the body in the sea, the ocean, you get all of that uh that beneficial minerals that are, that come from the sea but then also again we look at the side of how much pollution's happened over the years and and it has that uh swings and roundabout effect of yeah. you know how much you know purity are we getting from the the air that we breathe and the oceans that we live near so you know these things are uh, included in the food that we consume because of the mineral content um the seaweed it's a science, it really is, it. because of the way that the, let's say the matrix has created everything to be so perfect, you just believe it's so right going on a fruit-based diet, because everything makes sense and logical, and then before you know it, you hit with something like a deficiency, you feel very unwell, then it's continually keeping you on a quest and unstable within your, your beliefs or your truth. Yeah, it makes you second guess the, the diet is good for you, because you feel a, a crash and you feel all these symptoms that you're not well. But it's perfectly designed. It is, because you have to find the truth yourself, and this is why we gravitated towards your energy, Casey, because you always try things out, and you know, you you walk your truth and we really and you're honest that. you're honest in yourself and which is great and where i was just quickly going uh, with the commercial world is you see how over time there was scurvy 
mm-hmm. you know, vitamin C deficiency, then they had iodine deficiency, they iodized the salt, and vitamin B12, and, and it was just added added perfectly into the standard Western diet. That's why it was like it was. So we have to just be very cautious in navigating our way out of the standard Western diet and realize that, you know, we might want to be spiritual uh, in our arrogance and live holistically in one certain way, but we have to then let go of the idea that this was a spiritual quest and do what's best. And that's actually using every tool you have. And in your research and your findings and in elevating yourself, your journey is specifically for you, but you'll find it in, in, in your garden. If you had your own garden and you were planting your own food and you had your own trees, the soil was very rich. The bacterial life was there. You'd be fine. But if the if you go to the commercial places that offer us an abundance of food, it's not going to be grown with all the vitamins and minerals that we need. It's just not. It's the matrix. It, it's kind that they're offering that to us <laughs> and we can get it from at least one place. However, we need to make sure that our bodies are thriving on the diets that we choose mm. to do. Therefore, the meat and dairy industry that are heavily funded will provide that to a certain degree with the added chemical bonus and mm. the, you know, because the masses keep, aren't seeking it. Sick. You know, they aren't seeking it. They get sick, and there's a wonderful industry of pharmacology which is to administer poison into people, and then the cycle continues for a great business, which so, leads us on to protein and things like this. How do you get it? Yeah, it's unique. interesting with the deficiencies, because when you say like, yeah, we believe in this fruit based diet, it's perfect, it makes sense on all levels, and then we can run into deficiencies. And I think that's what really fueled my experimentation was just doubt crept in at some point. Yeah. It's funny, because like, when I was doing the raw vegan thing in the beginning, my mom was also doing it. Like I told her about it. I was like, we're frugivores. Like, look at this fruit. And she's like, I love fruit. Really? Like, and so she was making smoothies. She lost so much weight. She was getting great. And then at some point I just found the paleo diet and I was like, Oh, you know what? I think we were actually cavemen. We were supposed to eat meat. And (laughs) some people are just eating a lot of meat. And she's like, really? I love meat. (laughs) And and that yeah, yeah. sent her on a downward spiral back to that. And she was so healthy on the raw vegan thing, but that doubt creeps in. And that's yeah. what really just made me want to change paths and like, okay, this isn't right. But if it's a simple fix of a supplement, like, so like you're saying B12 should in theory be in like only. on the fruits it is only yes. found in the synthesis of soil a bacteria feeds on cobalt in the soil and that's how it's produced in any way otherwise a laboratory okay but they so... still feed the bacteria cobalt to create the b12 synthetic. Yeah. yeah so is there a supplement you recommend does it matter like methyl cobalamine sublingual yeah i mean a lot of people who are looking for like a truth with it they think that the uh cyanide version is dangerous you know cyanocobalamin which i think there's a recommended daily allowance of cyanide in your diet anyway and it's like a hundred times less than that with inside this shot so you could take a supplement and look for the cleanest supplement with no fillers and like methyl or to be honest, any, you know, any hydroxy is supposed to be the best and most efficient and easiest, but I wouldn't really choose one over the other. I We have seen people with uh, deficiencies so deep that they lost the feeding in their legs and their arms and their spine started tingling and things like this. They were losing motor functions uh, in bed with anemia, fatigue, wasting and uh, didn't know what it was and like three or four days later after having some b12 injections the pain the the feelings back in their hands their arms their feet their legs and then the energy levels are gone uh, back to normal after you know three to five weeks and because the red blood cells are so depleted they their cospicular volume is bigger and then you have like a lower count so you're always searching for more oxygen you just feel fatigued and tired and is something remedied as simple as this and that's the trick with, with the meat because that's synthesized and it does have it in it because of what the practices are you eat meat you feel better 
And then you start to feel like a little bit down again because you're having the acidity and let's say the not so easily assimilated fuel within your body, death, you know, and it makes you feel worse again. So you're stuck in this limbo. So the initial feeling, when, if you have B12 deficiency, will when you eat the meat, will you feel great and you may crave you it get, yeah you're, you're crazy because you're your body crazy. remembers the last source it had and then you smell chicken or you smell and you're like wow this is something i need to eat but yeah. then like josh was saying after that deficiency is balanced you again, won't fancy it again the the meat is only there for that serving that purpose so then therefore your the other diseases that you may get from the chemical imbalances of that will then continue to make uh, you feel a lot worse okay and i know a lot of people that supplement b12 and they say it gives them acne is that is, do you know why that would be they may be supplementing something which is mildly toxic and they may be on a very clean diet so they're adding this in the body's just expelling it very quickly and it's coming up as a you know a immune response you could say but clean B12 shouldn't mm, be. And B12 has like a sugar added. Yeah, that like glycerin and things like this. So, mm -hmm. you know, in, in in we're trying to create something now ourselves as the cleanest type of multi supplement you can have perfectly balanced for somebody like ourselves or like you who's trying mm -hmm. to thrive on this diet. But essentially, if you had your own garden, that's why it's kind of our journey to make people aware that, you know, if you find uh, yourself on this diet, the ultimate real living space would be a garden where you can grow your own fruits and vegetables at least seasonally you don't have to be somewhere in the tropics but like somewhere like spain south of spain or try to grow as much as you can you're going to live you know a very extended period of life without any ailments if you can't just remember that the, the supplementation is is probably needed because of the way that the commercial it's definitely is needed and that's the thing that's the sad thing there's a lot of us create a, a mindset that we don't want anything like that mm -hmm. okay um all right last thing on the supplements and then we'll move on um d3 does it matter the source like they say it's from lamb's wool or something like is there a better vegan d is or... the best yeah lichen <laughs> l-i-c-h-e-n okay it's a source found in woodland on trees it's kind of in between like a fungus um and and it's very high in you, you'll know it when you go on your walks if you just type it in you'll recognize it but yeah okay. a lot of uh, good supplements like vegan are, are with lichen so okay. it's friendly for those who don't want to cause any conflict with animals fur or anything okay. like that yeah and last thing about the b12 for a blood test i've heard you want to test methylmalonic acid instead of B12 levels? Is that true? On an initial uh, testing, you can just ask for B12. It might be a bit simpler because in the people who we send to get tested, that's the initial test. If you still feel like there's some issues, then you can go for further testing. But a lot of the time, most of the time, that's low. You know that you can remedy yourself. You may be able to go to a local, uh, like health spa place that give you shots you may just want to continue to supplement but if you are very low i would say that supplement yourself with the shots for probably twice a week for two weeks and then once every two weeks and then get yourself a daily supplement and you'll find yourself balanced there okay and iodine is an interesting one is there a reason like you make the kombu I've been mm -hmm. craving nori like crazy. Mm -hmm. I've just been eating whack loads of it with dried figs. Fig sushi <laughs> exists. <laughs> it's actually pretty Your good. Taste buds. <laughs> <laughs> Poor things. Yeah, dried figs yeah. are actually high in cobalt as well. Mm -hmm. They're one of the highest in cobalt, which your body okay. might be trying to synthesize. Be craving it because of a deficiency somewhere as well. So be really yeah, good I've to get been, tested to see. I've been eating quite a bit of dried fruit lately. Not like we have fresh fruit. So I try to eat as much, usually a couple meals of 
fresh fruit or juices, but then my dinner, I feel like I want something more dense and Shoot. just to have the abundance of it here. Like I can just go buy many packs of dried figs. They're always ripe. Do you think dried fruit could be a problem? I do want to talk about iodine, but just... it definitely causes like a bit of acid reflux. So it's mm. not sitting with you as perfectly as it would be if it was hydrated. They're slightly more imbalanced. The sugars are slightly more imbalanced when they're dried. So we want it in its whole pure form as much as possible when healing. Um, not to say that the future. Yeah, just be aware of it. Yeah. Have you started getting any slight reflux? A little bit of acid mm. burn? No, I used to get that usually with starch. If I eat like mm. rice and beans or something, I, I noticed that, but never with fruit. Mm. Yeah, you'll probably be aware there'll be a certain limit you're all right with. But maybe you could just soak some for a couple of hours before and just get them a bit more okay. hydrated. But yeah, I wouldn't say it's going to be a massive issue, but it's not. It, you can feel it's not optimum. Yeah. And yeah. that is, I had, did have another question. We might as well just tick it off. Can sugar be a problem? Like even, I know in diabetes like it's the fat that causes the insulin resistance so mm. too much fat is the issue but there was like that walter kempner's rice diet it was just rice fruit and white sugar and that would heal diabetes and i'm just wondering if is is sugar a bad thing like on a fruit what if you want to add some coconut sugar to your smoothie or something like is sugar no longer a problem or should we just at the beginning it's like everything's okay if you do it yourself so use dates because coconut sugar has been through a process an extraction process the machines are cleaned daily it's always bleach. got residue of something else on so having um the coconut in its whole form added to whatever you feel like you want at the time is always the best option when we buy something that's extracted is not the whole holistic form so we don't have that personally yeah. do we we stopped having that so you'll know as well but you think your body doesn't recognize anything out of its natural space when it does it has to call in the troops and those troops might be a different form of fungus a different form of bacteria a protozoa something that needs to break these things down in your body and then you don't have it again and then it has a die-off and then you don't have it again, and you do. And, and same with potatoes. You can eat potatoes happily. If you have them every day, small bit of your meal, or you have them a couple times a week, it's fine. But if you have it once a week... And then you start... Strong. And then you start feeling symptoms, and you're not sure why. You're having, like, candida in the mouth, sores, and things are coming up, because they're constantly dying and reigniting and dying and reigniting. Hmm. Yeah, that's tough to navigate that. It's like it's detox but it's also die off and you're causing it by this one cheat meal a week and mm -hmm. then you just sit where yes. you yeah. want to sit see if you feel nice having some homemade potatoes some sweet potatoes some sprouts some broccoli things like this but staying predominantly on a fruit-based diet and you're not healing from a chronic illness or a disease and just find yourself there sit with it and stay balanced Mm -hmm. And you'll find that you won't have any issues. It just takes a couple of weeks to be able to build up to this slow and steady. And you will find a pure balance within your body. Okay. All right. So we will talk about iodine and then move on to some yeah. stuff. So do you recommend, I know some, who is it? Don Bennett, the raw vegan, he recommends iodine supplementation. And I always wonder, like, why not just eat seaweed? Is it because, like, maybe the toxicity of our oceans, it's better to supplement iodine? Or I think eating seaweed is very hard to be digested, so you're not getting the full benefits out of it. So we like to boil us and then steep the nutrients out. And, I mean, it is magnificent. Like, the, the real observation of it is how much the iodine really takes a big difference on somebody with iodine deficiency because it's very high in iodine and, and really one with one ice cube a day stops people with their goiters goes right back in so you know it's working when you observe this you know as for other minerals you're going to find an array of vitamins and minerals within your fruit-based diet you know even the omegas that people are very you know cautious about is found in your fruits and vegetables i mean mango and avocado are one of the highest 
So this is uh, a, a definitely uh, an efficient diet, but those three you have to kind of navigate around, which is the the B12 and iodine okay. and D3. Interesting. Is there a ratio that you make your kombu to water in your broth? Yeah, we've got a video, haven't we, on our yeah. on our YouTube channel on the website? I think it's on the website. We can share it with you, yeah. but we just okay. get a box of kombu, which is probably 250 grams. Mm -hmm. maybe one liter of water we boil it down to about 400 mil very slowly over about two hours let it sit to cool down put it in a jug with a sieve and then pour it into ice cubes and we usually would say is it 30 maybe 30 yeah. 60 ice cubes out of that which will last you two months or a month for you and so your partner we put it in a we call it like a ban marie so it's not heated directly it's in a like a pan above like a dish above a pan um so that it's not direct heat almost it's if you like do that steep. though steep it all day if you mm -hmm. don't if you just want to boil it just a good hour or two very low heat and just let it simmer down but um yeah we'll share that with you as well because mm -hmm. it's uh really beneficial for so beneficial the minerals yeah it's probably why i'm craving the nori but it definitely gives me some gas <laughs> chewing mm -hmm. that nori it's, that's the obvious sign of uh, improper digestion you know? mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah and so like do you believe in food combining because i your yeah. little sauce you mentioned earlier had dates and coconut and we're mixing Chronic sugar illnesses and fat. don't yeah don't do if that. you're trying to live a happy life instead of having to cheat you know you can create i mean i make curries from raw fruits and i warm them in like a bamari to their hot enough to be like cooked food and then it tastes better than you would ever get from a restaurant so good and and that's all you need to realize is if you're doing something yourself in a whole food way you're going to be absolutely fine you're going to live happy prosperous and healthy if you're healing then there's just a protocol to remove certain things allow yourself this stillness and then reintroduce things over time and, you know, you can incorporate with this type of healing mechanism. So you go to fruit and you have fasting intermittently, you have a, a water fast, and then you can use some like blood purification. Have you ever heard of like electrification of the blood? No, like I've heard some supplements that target cleansing the blood, but. Yeah, because the blood's usually got parasites, fungus and bacteria in it living in there a lot of the time having a small electric current run through your body will remedy these uh, viruses, fungus and bacteria. And uh, when I, when you do this, you have certain hiding places in your lymph nodes, then you can use like electromagnetic therapy to, uh, you know, attack these ones within your lymph nodes, but it's been proven to reverse or cure AIDS and hepatitis and Epstein-Barr viruses and things like this. And you can make them yourself, but they are cheap. Uh, to buy and you can give what, yourself what's a it filter. called it's like blood electrification i can send you links okay there was a there was a, a man called robert beck i think and he, he has manuals online pdfs that you can make these devices yourself and and also if you if you drink silver water do you ever drink like silver colloids or colloidal silver i have colloidal silver but i i never take it internally it was only when i would get oh, okay. like blisters from the pineapple is that so a say, virus or like what is that why do i get a blister no, it's <laughs> a reaction from going too close to the core or having it unright. okay so you just have to i mean how do you find a right pineapple in canada you know it's difficult and it's the same in the uk so you just got to be careful. Just maybe juice it and not go too close to the core. I juice the core too. Oh, <laughs> oh that's, that's your issue. <laughs> that's so with, a, with colloidal silver, all you need to do is get yourself a 9-volt battery and some pure silver wire. Wrap it around both and put that in a cup of water for three minutes and you've got yourself a really ionized silver water, which is great, for example for helping you through a period of uh, sickness, say, you know, AIDS, let's say people don't die of AIDS. They die of something, which an additional thing that causes them to die because their immune system's low. But if they take collodial silver during that process, it won't happen. 
And then you can use this blood purification process and electromagnetic therapy to go into your lymph nodes and, you know, heal yourself that way, which I feel uh, is the end goal for somebody who's done a transition into a fruit-based mm. water fasting, juice fasting lifestyle, because even that itself can, can clean your body from, I would say, 99.9% .9 of ailments anyway. So once mm -hmm. the body is clean, mm. then it's so, so important to remineralize the body after that clean period. Yeah. So the most important part of fasting is post-fasting, really, because you want to rebuild the body because it's completely depleted and clean. And now you want to add those vitamins and minerals back in the best way you can, the most efficient way and a very slow process just eating or I mean what you experienced when you had to go to the emergency room is like for you when, <laughs> when you experience that you know that it has to be done in a really proper way so people that are beginning a fast or interested in fasting I mean we do have these pre and post protocols on our website but it's very important to empower yourself with the knowledge going into the fast that you need to work downwards and then back up again mm. in a slow controlled manner and be empower yourself with that notice so mm. that you don't fall poorly to um the aspects of you know going too quickly into something that you don't understand your yeah. truth quite a few people in our community have done like 40 day water fast and they just find so much benefit from it but some people don't because first of all blood tests you might just deplete yourself so much of what's there you know secondly um when you're doing an extended water fast we would recommend highly that you take like a multivitamin supplement make sure you're getting your vitamin d and your b and add in a small bit of himalayan salt into your water just to keep that mineral balance in your body Otherwise, you can deplete yourself and have an elect electrolyte imbalance. But I think when people are when the people do it on their own without no um, testing or checking, because you know some people go away and do these uh, little camps where they're tested, their blood pressure is tested, and they get their blood work done initially before, and people are checking on them. If you're doing it at home on your own and it's an extended fast and you have no idea if you're depleted of vitamins and minerals in the first place and then you go into this uh, heavy, long water fast and you're depleting yourself even further, you may not even realise, but your body will go into um, like a shock uh, form and you will feel incredibly poorly and need to have medical intervention because of that. Yeah, so even it's kombu really in your water, you know, you're still having uh the the true autophagy take place you know you're going to be in that ketosis state for such a long period of time so having things like this i mean there's a guy who done 382 days on a water fast very fat very big guy uh, one of the great things that comes out of it is you don't actually have the the stretch in skin when you water fast as you would if you did a juice fast you know there's so many different things that take place um, but yeah, just go very careful if you're doing another fast, just try to make sure your blood is good and you do supplement and keep your minerals high and your vitamins high. When we say supplementation, uh, Casey, I know you had uh, protein powder, we don't mean things that. like that before. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah I tried that. That was not working. Yeah. <laughs> nothing in the world of like supplements in that sense they mm. don't pay dividends to take it just causes mm. distendedness bloating gas and discomfort we would always look for the clean source of pure um, mm -hmm. vitamins minerals type yeah it makes sense because like breaking the fast i mean there's that story of the guy who died breaking the fast with potatoes i think it was mm. he just died like i'm very lucky to have lived I think he chose through. i think he chose because he was so excited to eat <laughs> oh maybe <laughs> yeah that would have been fun a potato but <laughs> that story did have a happy ending though just for the audience when i got out of the emergency room and i'm in pain and i'm i'm on a cab and i get home and i just i noticed that there's a juice bar right next to my condo and i was like that's what's gonna save me and I went in there, got their electrolyte juice, whatever that was, pineapple, celery. And that just, once I drank that juice, 
the pain dissipated enough to where I could actually lay down and not be in extreme pain. And I fell asleep and I felt almost completely better <laughs> the next day. And yeah. it was the juice that saved me. Yeah. Saved your life. <laughs> yeah. So fasting, do you see dry fasting as even a higher truth than water fasting? Or is that a dangerous one? It can be done. It's not something that people should just try to achieve. I wouldn't recommend it for a long period of time at all because our body does need hydration and constantly we're expelling water even if we can't see it from our body from our mouth so i think it's more of an extreme thing not necessarily a goal for healing but okay. a lot of people yeah. have a spiritual journey that leads them into spiritual concepts and one of the concepts is breatharianism mm -hmm. which makes one feel like this is seeking the highest but what's happening is there's not much function going on with the body so it allows you to kind of contemplate and be more still to observe what's going on but that which is physical is never going to be non-physical and that which is non-physical is source so anything physical any type of journey externally or application to this body will never lead you to enlightenment enlightenment is led with uh, removing of these concepts to recognize what is real and what is not which is that you are aware and all things that you are aware of arise within yourself. But that's a totally different subject. But... Well, when we look at, if you see what Josh was saying with the physical aspect of how much of our body is water, for instance, what uh, how much of our brain is water, mm. how the bodily functions all depend on that water. How much water it's... is in meat? <laughs> there was water in it when it had its <laughs> blood, but... <laughs> When it's pretty good. much it's been juiced <laughs> <laughs> but then you look at the um aspect of how we can thrive healthily with uh i know casey you did a video on the distilled water and stuff like that and the fruits are a natural form of still amazing electromagnetic water, water and yeah. and that's how we thrive off um fruits because of that aspect like you barely feel like you need to drink water when you're on just a fruit diet because of that aspect of um pure water mm. going into the body and getting absorbed really fast uh, in the intestines and and the lack of inflammation uh helps you heal because uh, there's no process going on or very little processing going on within the digestive system therefore all the energy um can go to the places where you need it for healing and that's why many people get a lot of benefits from healing on an easier simulated diet like fruit because that is enabling all of the energy to go towards that which is why it's so good for diabetes you yeah. know because there's a high dominance of fructose which doesn't need the insulin and the body you know goes into the liver and converts into glucose but it converts into lactate and also glycogen and glucose can be, I mean, you can use uh, like 90 grams in like 40 minutes of exercise. And you think 90 grams is quite a lot of, you know, glucose to be used. Then you have stored glycogen in the muscles and in the liver, which then replenishes that. So the act level of activity you do, you know, is sugar bad. It's your source of fuel. And the body has mechanisms to store it and to convert it as it's, as it's needed. And the great thing about having like raw fruit dominance is this, the high water content is actually very filling so you know when to stop you know and if you do feel something like when you felt on day 56 maybe you should just listen to this instead of the idea you know the start to do 90 days or progression we are and we do have this wonderful tool and intuition is something that you do tune into your inner tutor as you take this journey mm-hmm when you mentioned fructose, one of the comments I get so often is you're going to get fatty liver from all that fruit. And it's it's like some guy did a study. It's like, oh, when we inject a monkey with fructose, high fructose corn syrup directly in his brain, we noticed that <laughs> fructose was causing him problems. Like yeah. fruit, in my opinion, fruit cleans the liver, right? Like it's yeah, how yeah. could it ever cause fatty liver if there's no fat fruitarians? Like why why are we 
Stuck it's just the concept world and you know we live in the age of hearsay and untruth with lots of deception so a lot of these are hearsay and untruths and no one's looking at the study so it's just blown up on social media and on google but you go into the studies it's always with high fructose corn syrup and this is known to be one of the deadliest substances to cause the most disease on the planet so mm-hmm. it's uh, it's just essentially that you know you shouldn't be eating anything that's not grown from the ground or you do yourself and i feel like that's a foundation for health you know don't go out externally and try to i mean you can do i'm not saying don't but you go to a shop for example we wash all of our food by carbon vinegar we clean it whether it's organic or not you know when you go to an organic farm or farmers in our area they spray the fields with muck so they collect from the water sewage systems poo and all these things which contain listeria e coli all these different types of bacteria and they're found on your fruit there's certain um problems that you'll get from these viruses or bacteria which actually take and leach b12 out your body as a host so it's things like improper washing of your food you can be consuming fecal matter getting issues because of the way these practices are done which then lead you to ill health and questions about the food that you're consuming as well so it's, it's, it's a multiple complex system that we are navigating around and it leads you to one space of simple or simplicity and that's your own garden you eat your own food from it and you know wash everything if you have to buy it you'll be good but if you can then taking small steps towards your ultimate truth Mm. is so beneficial because you'll look back over the space of a year and you'll see what changes you've implemented and which ones you're able to maintain because ultimately it's about bettering the self hour by hour and day by day if we have teachings that need to happen they just keep cycling you'll just keep getting ill until you know what's right for you and this is the beauty of learning is that actually our bodies are telling us what's good and what's not good but are we in tune but my mind's telling me i like these these chips from the shop the cookies yeah Mm. So it's what life path do you want to... But remember, your journey is specifically, everyone's journey is leading them to elevation, no matter what level of consciousness they're at. And your journey is quite a higher journey, so it's really pointing you, because I, I know that you, you're you finding spiritual evolution at the same time as this physical evolution and peace, and you're a very peaceful being. So life is just leading you here, and whatever's happened to you is absolutely purposeful and for you, so... It's just waiting for, you know, the next level. Yeah, this is a fun conversation. I am learning quite a bit. I'm I'm learning not to be so dogmatic and just believe, okay, fruit has, I can just eat nothing but fruit. Like I've heard lots of these masters who have been raw vegan for many years. And most of them say like, pay attention to your B12 and D3. Like these are real things. Like don't just live in your garden of Eden and ignore everything if you're having issues. So I think I will get a blood test and see, cause I used to do that. I used to do it like every year or so and check my kidney function got so bad on the carnivore diet. It was, what was that? The EGFR reading? Like it was of a 90 year old man. Like it was terrible. Oh. <laughs> and creatinine like it shot right up and i was like oh my goodness that's the waste product of creatine isn't it and that'll bring me to something after you've finished i'll, I'll let you finish up you now yeah i just wanted to say so like we have learned that i think people sometimes feel better eating meat because either they're getting the b12 that they were lacking it could be even the iodine in the salmon or whatever that is. But I also feel like it could be hormones. Like there's hormones that seem to just, for some people, I just have this theory. I'm not sure if I'm right or not, but I was doing medical mediums approach a couple of years ago and it was basically low fat plant-based, but I wasn't feeling great. And I would add in, just a can of sardines a week and I would get this boost and I call it the fish boost. I was like, why do I feel this like immediate boost in energy? Like everything's good. And I just feel like it's the hormones. And when you come off that, because I was eating nothing but fruit and meat for the past 
right before going vegan again and I was feeling really good. And then I removed the meat and almost immediately I started getting tired and kind of weak feeling and, but it's picked up already. I just feel like some vegans, you have to wait to adapt and produce these hormones again, like your adrenals, you're used yeah. to getting these hormones from meat. And so they get lazy and we rely on that. And when you remove it, your body's like, uh oh, we we don't have those hormones. We don't even know how to make them. Do you think I'm right with that theory? Like I, I would say you are right. Yeah, you know. And for a great example is, um, I had recently my my testosterone levels checked. Maybe at the early part of last year was it? Maybe April, May, June, something like this. And when they phoned me, they asked me if I was on any type of anabolic steroids. Um, I, and I was no. And the range in England was between 13 and 29, uh, which is just the scale of testosterone, 29 being the highest. Mine was actually 42. And I then looked into studies, and in the 90s, there were studies done with uh, vegans, and they weren't really kept on, but it was known that vegans had uh, a lot higher testosterone than any meat eater does. And that would be down to the down regulation of hormones, one for having them in externally, and then the body doesn't really produce them. And if it does have to reproduce them, then, you know, you'll get an elevated state when you come off of these foods. Um, and another one being that the body's deteriorating so much, the hormone functions aren't actually working as well as they should be. But you're, I would say you're very, very right there. You know, it's the same if someone takes anabolic steroids. You know, there's a point where a man would have a testosterone of a five-year-old girl and then it would eventually go back up. Yeah. So just to be patient through that process, if you're just wondering, why am I so tired? Like your body should kick back online at some point. Yeah. And yeah. for those Usually who don't know on... A couple of weeks, that's it. Usually after a few weeks, but it depends on how long and how long, how big the you know the damage is done. Yeah, I feel like after a couple of weeks, maybe a month on this fruit based thing, like I was tired in the beginning, but now my energy is back and I'm going on long hikes and things are great. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I was just gonna say for those who don't know on my channel, these two are both fruitarian and very fit and healthy looking and like. I think you're on a journey right now to like build some muscle as a fruitarian to show I, like, I mean, I, I was, when did we start off? We did a course on our website, like yeah. a transformational September, course under September, under September, September, where we did a, uh, basically a training system for anyone who's interested in training all the way up from like working at home to like a bodybuilding regime. Um, and I, I did it three months before we launched it. So I was training for, it was about four months, actually. Mm -hmm. And in four months, I managed to put on course, 55 pounds, <laughs> 55 pounds. But before I was, I was lean and I was fasting. But um, yeah, I mean, my strength uh, from doing nothing at all, because I, I had seven years off training. I used to train a lot and I had seven years off. We went to land, we went with the trees and grew our own fruits and vegetables. And then went on this journey to help people reverse diseases and heal. Um I think I put on five inches on my arms in that amount of time as well. It's a, uh, I, I know that we teach this a lot, but um, for those guys that are new to seeing us, that we try to, as much as possible, guide beings to do mind, body, spirit. So it's, you know, with the food, this is what we've covered extensively today. Um, I know there's a lot to take in, but also there's an acidity to if you're feeling stressed, anxious, depressed, mm -hmm. all of that acidity will hold within the being as well. So trying to balance that state of what you know is truth for you, because uh, Casey, maybe like even when you were eating the meat and the or the dairy products, it wasn't aligned to your inner tuition like you said when you see an animal you love to uh, do photography with it which is amazing what you capture and um, when you're around them you feel like you're aligned with them and then you go and eat one and, and initially even before you've eaten that your intention is to like be repelled from it so you're putting an intention into that um, 
you know, that energy field of like, actually, this is not what I'm aligned with. So therefore, it creates an imbalance within. And everyone knows that we're electrical beings and that we get, you know, the energy, we take on board the energy that we uh, see, that we hear, yeah. that we eat. You would be at conflict with your emotions it's for constantly sure. constantly like this. So we're always um, guiding beings for that balance. So mm. the mind, again, if it's constantly uh, talking from ego states, we try and help beings move towards more towards the loving energy, the virtuous way, um, and then bring that body not over to the completely spiritual fairy type thing, but into that balanced state always. So um, one thing you said that was funny wasn't you remember what you said that you was eating fruit for such a long period of time that you felt like, comfortable in white robes. I thought that was very <laughs> funny because that that comes with the spiritual concept as well. You know a lot. Of, a lot yeah. of us create the idea of spirituality and move into it. We're always externally looking for something, but the missing thing is the internal work, which is the conflict you're at within your own thoughts. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you spot this? And essentially, how do you become free from it? Which is enlightenment. It's just enlightening meant, and which is mind. But that's why some beings you can see that are comfortably eating meat because they have no concept that it's, Bad. bad for them um, and, and being dense for them they have no conflict within their being they're like okay I'm eating this way and I'm enjoying mm -hmm. it and I'm happy I've got no problems therefore we leave those beings to do exactly that because they're in a state of bliss with it almost but when you come across issues with chronic illness or something that, that may have just come up we always say look at the holistic aspect of it not just what am I eating and how can this benefit me but how are my feelings with regards to this aspect am I applying my truth and belief to experience knowing and wisdom because belief as you got it on your top if you look at the middle words it's lie <laughs> and if you believe <laughs> if you believe something is not true because truth is truth and a knowing is very different than a believing so when you have a belief, you have a will to apply it. If you don't apply that will, a form of thought will come in, which is called a demon, you know, uh, in you know, mysticism and religion. And it will take you from the present moment. So you're living in this inner conflict. So you either learn how to take your attention off of this and continue with life, or you one by one free yourself from the ideas that you have, which are concepts inside your personality. And this is one thing that I will say Josh and I worked heavily on when we were away in Spain initially, is that although we were on this huge food journey of like shifting, um, we also worked on that mind, body, spirit or soul aspect of, you know, really igniting that unity within and stripping away those old programs that we might have had uh from childhood with the peers or the family yeah and uh that freed um, yeah you, you have a lot of conflict especially within relationships <clears throat> and one of the great things is an expectation of your partner for example you don't want her to do something and you've told her and she does it again now that expectation is there you're suffering it creates aggression and anger within you when if you just let go of the idea and just let someone else be as they wish because it's only a form of control you be yourself and if you want to enjoy life you be kind and nice to each other and which... this doesn't create an acidic uh, environment within it creates a very balanced environment mm -hmm. and a happy and we don't want to change anybody because we know we can and having a will or a desire to change someone causes you suffering that's why the word issue is you mm. yeah I, I was very lucky that my girlfriend at the time, my fiance now, she was so accepting of me when I first went carnivore. I was like, yeah, I'm on a beef cleanse right now. And she was like, a beef cleanse. And she was like, yeah, that would be what you do. And like, she just took it. And it, I feel for people who are in a relationship where it, it, there is a conflict there. And I don't know, some people just have no problem with eating meat. A lot of my audience like they're just like we're here we're the alpha predators and we're here to kill like I, I i don't believe it i don't feel that but 
maybe it's a journey for them. Eventually they'll realize, but. Yeah, I mean, the truth's always going to set you free. So whether or not you're eating a diet, which is going to lead the body to an early death, uh, eventually you'll have to be on continual journey of your evolution of consciousness it will lead you to a space where you don't which is one of the things you know if you look at the tribes the maasai tribe they've got an average life expectancy of 42 to 45 years of age it's not a very long life expectancy they're predominantly on a meat-based diet you know and then you look at the inuits and uh, that they were eating fish which is a better form of food because it's less conscious and has less emotional and uh, instability within inside the flesh yeah, they're like 60 years of age you know so there's not a really long living lifespan of somebody that's eating a predominantly meat dominant lifestyle and one of the questions that you know, smart people who are eating meat tend to ask is which is what i was going to share with you right now is there's a guy called Carnivore MD. Have you heard of him? Yeah, Paul Saladino. Yeah. There's a little clip here that I'll share with you. I'm, I hope you can hear it. Um, let me see if I can share the screen. So yeah, he's, he's, he's interesting. interesting. So there was a clip called Vegans are Silly. Okay. Can you, can you hear it? Um... Press play. Can you hear that? I can't. No. 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 It's okay. We'll uh, but it, figure it out. There's a it has there. subtitles. If I stop sharing it one second, and then I'll be able to put the sound to it. But he's speaking to a, it looks like a Rastafarian guy who only eats plants in a supermarket. And he's asking, where are you getting all these substances from? because you only get them from meat okay so if i do an advance here I do audio. and there we go share sound there we go share. choline from eating plants mm -hmm. where are you how are you gonna get how are you gonna get your choline from eating plants? Mm -hmm. Where are you gonna get choline from? Where are you gonna get creatine from? Where are you gonna it's get in plants? No, there's no creatine in plants. Where are you gonna get carnitine from? Where are you gonna get where are you gonna get uh where are you gonna get answering and taurine? Where are you gonna get vitamin K2? You ever heard I'm of vitamin you, K2? I'm telling you, all our food is in plants. No all our herbs <laughs> in plants. Did you hear that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So everything that he mentioned there is synthesized within the body. Everything. So the reason why meat has this is because the animals have also synthesized that in their body. And all of these in excess are toxic, just like creatine. You, know, you have creatinine, which is a waste product of too much creatine in the body, which you would have had tested and you find this elevated. So most people who don't really understand the body and its functions will say you need these things because you get these from meat but it's truly all synthesized in the body all we need is this wonderful type of sugar glucose that we get from fuel which is fructose and glucose and the amino acids they bind together to create protein synthesis and this is another thing which we feel like you may be deficient in if you are a vegan is protein and you'll find that the hardest things to digest in the plant kingdom are higher in protein, like the nuts, the seeds, the legumes, and things like this, because protein has actually been created from amino acids. So life creates this. So let's say the meat that is on an animal, which is protein, has been synthesized from glucose and amino acids. They have worked together to create protein, and now this is turned into muscle. To eat this flesh, which is protein, it has to be broken down into smaller chains of amino acids and then re-put back together in the body. It's not an efficient way. It's an acidic process. It is an yes. acidic process. So when you have the simple uh, chains of amino acids through the fruit, for instance, your body can assimilate this very quickly, very efficiently and very easily. So you get what you need from it, although you need a larger amount, which is why the nutrient dense um, juices and things like that are very good to add in mm -hmm. as well as your fruit that you're consuming as a whole product. Um, but yeah, the, the harder things to break down are have to be changed and converted 
but like Josh was saying, you know, there's only out of the um, amino acids, our bodies can synthesize um, more than not. So there's like an essential list of amino acids and like a non-essential list. Um, and the essential list, you can get them all from plants, all of them. Every life stems from plant life, you know, and what's better to grow your biceps than something that has glucose or an amino acid in it when you're training. So when someone's training, they go for an amino acid drink. They might fill it with a glucose powder, which has been synthesized from maize. Why don't you just have a grape juice or an orange juice and take that into your gym and fuel your workout with this? And you've got a perfectly aligned, natural, balanced drink. Like your body is ready to go. For fuel. You're light. You're not taking on board any type of, let's say, cooked food. You know, even though it's fine to have some cooked food, you, you are killing some digestive enzymes. Your body then has to make them up inside which is slight acidity and then it makes you a bit tired but the best fuel for your body is found in fruit for any type of muscle growth all of the biggest land animals on earth they consume plant life every single one giraffes elephants gorillas and what do rhinos beings like to eat most they don't often go for a predator well, they don't. You know, you wouldn't see a lot of people eating the flesh of a predator. It would always predominantly be... Even a uh, lion will kill a hyena, but it won't eat a hyena because hyenas eat meat. Yeah, that yeah. protein. I think that's what has led me down some hard paths <laughs> in mm. the past. Yeah. Always focusing on thinking I need extra protein, but it's always the hardest to digest. Like if you want to mm -hmm. add in okay i want a bunch of hemp seeds and it's like that's way harder to digest than fruit or if you want the beans Beef. i mean maybe you can adapt at some point but i just found when i stopped focusing on protein my digestion was so much better and just like no protein powders mm -hmm. no high protein foods even vegetables are high in protein and they're mm -hmm. hard to digest and it's rough man it's it is. It's just concepts of the world, though. Hey, so you know you've got a great physique, and if you wanted to build your physique, you know all you need to do is eat more. So I would say after watching your recent video, you just you don't eat enough to really thrive. So right now you said that you're feeling lighter. So you're like, what do you do? One arm pull ups and things like this still. Yeah, I'm doing one arm negatives now, and I can do seven of them, which is more than I've ever been able to do and i feel like my strength is there but i'm lighter i've lost like a good 10 pounds and i noticed this on my juice fast as well like i could not do a one arm pull up until i started that juice fast and then i just i felt like it was the electrical energy or something because it wasn't that i lost a ton of weight it was like four pounds i was down that shouldn't be enough to be able to do that but i was doing them and and then eventually I got weaker and weaker, but that was happening maybe due to deficiency because it was around yeah. that like day 54 when I just started feeling super tired. Yeah. You will only grow to the amount of fuel you put in because it's very inefficient for uh, excess amount of muscle. So that's one of the things that I had to do, you know, on my bodybuilding journey when I was younger. I had to force feed, you have to train, you have to learn to be able to eat more and you continue to dedicate your life to this aspect of nutrition and essentially you will never grow bigger than the amount of food you put in. So you just, I would say for you, you when you started your day with the uh, the melon, you know, that would probably fuel you in training for an hour and then you need to have something again me again so this is why a fruit-based diet is so difficult to maintain without the abundance and the costs so then you could incorporate you know some vegetables and you know things like this into it to, to to balance yourself with the level of weight you need to gain so if i was to have a smoothie so first of all i'd rise and i would have water then i may have a juice and then i may have a smoothie but if i just went to a smoothie i'd probably have like five five bananas in it it's a grape juice or orange juice, something like this, and a few strawberries with an avocado. And that would fuel me for about an hour, an hour and a half. But this is not for healing the body. No, this is this for growing. This is for growth. Yeah. So it's a completely different system that we would recommend for 
someone that was building mm. muscle and then someone that was healing. How tall finished. are you, Casey? About oh, five seven. Five seven. Okay, what do you weigh? About like 132 now? 132. Okay, so yeah, I would just try to eat at least every two and a half hours and just have something at least a bit more substantial than a melon. And you're, you'll really notice because you'll be vascular, your skin's quite thin, you're very low body fat, you'll just see the gains quite rapidly. But it's just down to the amount of fuel you've got, really that simple. So is it, because I, how many calories do you eat when you were trying to like bulk up? Wasn't it like 10,000 calories or something? Yeah crazy like that. we used yeah. to put a, an alarm on so that he could uh in wake night time, time. Yeah. like please wake me up so i can eat but it, it really works so even if you put it into perspective this way uh a kilo of bananas which is about five or six bananas is a thousand calories nearly about 900 calories mm. people that are eating a standard diet calories isn't what people think it is calories isn't what works in the body it's a experiment with heat um, so the body works very differently. You can consume a significantly large, larger amount of food when you're whole food, plant based, or predominantly raw fruit based than you ever could on a on a Western diet, which causes you inflammation, the full feelings, and the body just doesn't really want it. So if you like to eat, this is the best diet for you. You can consume a significantly larger amount of food with without feeling any bloating, and then fuel the body again and again. Just look at a gorilla, you know, how much did they eat? How much time a day did they spend eating? You know, they go out as a family and collect their food and sit down for hours and just eat. Yeah, I was just curious. If I was to enter in mangoes, 10,000 calories of mangoes, I'm curious how much protein that is because it's it's very different. I'm, I wanted to get your thoughts on this because when I'm – when I was a meat eater eating one meal a day, so it was just once and it was a certain amount of protein, probably like 170, like way too much. But like, it seems when you're on the fruit, you have to constantly be eating. Why is that? Whereas like meat eaters can just eat the once and it's not this constant fuel, whereas fruit is like this constant thing. And I was just curious if you're like, eating 10,000 calories of mangoes to get this like 70 grams of protein or 136 uh, grams of protein. Okay. So, so I would just say that protein is essentially matter, a matrix of matter that's been built that has to be broken down into the amino acids that we need. So when you're consuming meat, it's so dense, it's not very assimilated easy by the body. It causes inflammation, which causes a full feeling and the breakdown of it's very slow. It's a totally different system that is degenerative rather than regenerative. So the body works at a different function, a different rate. And, you know, you're not necessarily regenerating or healing your body at the same time. So it's so different uh, to say that. So protein to me, in my experience and how I have seen it and the research and the science that I've seen it is unnecessary to consume. It will be consumed, and the harder the fuel, or the harder the food, it's just more dense in protein. It's just down to a simulation, really, as as in how fast it's going through the system. And fruit passes through super quick, super easy, super clean. Uh, meat is pretty much the complete opposite, which is dense, hard to digest, takes a long time to travel through all of the system that we have and is not an efficient way to fuel the body you can and you will mm -hmm. and if you go on ketosis you're just in starvation for a long period of time and people feel better because they're they're finding this autophagy take place but then they're adding in this uh unnecessary process to the body which will lead to further destruction so life expectancy just drops rapidly you use up the body's proteins and fats, you know, glycone, uh, gluconeogenesis takes place from proteins, uh, fats first, then proteins. So the muscle will eventually break down. I just don't feel like it's a great diet, you know, and it doesn't help people heal from chronic ailments. And what you may be doing, Casey, is that you were having a, a really good amount of time fasting and then eating your one meal a day. So you were yeah. actually balancing that meal with your 
healing abilities because you were fasting for that amount of time. So uh, all of the energy that was usually used up in digestion when you were eating differently before, like uh, maybe four or five times a day, was that energy was now being used to heal the body. And then you were eating that one meal, digesting it, assimilating it and uh, going like that, progressing like that. So yeah, that was the plan. I knew I needed to fast like 23 hours a day just to mm. counterbalance the effects <laughs> of the meat. But I feel like if you did that with a vegan plan, you'd be much better off. Mm. But it would be harder though because of the uh, you'd be a lot hungrier, you'd feel you know, you'd need to fuel that aspect of uh calories that you were eating before on the, the meat. but that's why cooked food plays a role when you're in cold climate because the body cools itself when you're on fruit and fruit is predominantly found in warmer areas and is seasonal in a warmer climate where wherever you are on earth so your body temperature adapts to that and if your body's trying to stay warm on a fuel system that keeps your body cool you have to burn more calories as well in trying to sustain the heat so it just plays this this huge role in it so i would say you know feel free in introducing yourself to cooked food, steam food, whatever you want to do with the vegetables because they break down slower. It's a better source of fuel than meat, mm -hmm. for sure. You know, it breaks down quicker. It's easily assimilated in the body. It's more of a natural thing and it's fine to do so. But again, when we go to chronic ailments, it's just seen time and time after again. If somebody's even moved to a whole food plant-based diet, they feel better. They might feel better if they've removed toxins and still on a meat-based diet. As someone's really chronically ill and they pull away from the, the meat, they get better. If they pull away from the cooked food, they feel better. They might not have fully healed their self. They go to a, a raw food diet and then they experience inflammation with the greens. And then you start to feel very sensitive to these foods. Deficiencies Nuts. And then you go into the, the fruits and fasting and fruit and fasting and fruit and people that have been debilitated in bed for 14 years, 16 years in a wheelchair are... are singing and dancing once they've experienced the fruit where they never did on the other diets and this is just a practice that we see time and time again so for us it's obvious you know for people that choose to sit and they don't have an illness on a on a whole food diet even with meat i mean my nan is 93 and she's eaten from her garden but does have meat you know in dairy and cheese and she's been disease free her whole life but it doesn't mean to say that that was the most efficient thing for her lifestyle because she still had cooked food and things. She might live till she's 130, you know? Mm. So it's all relative to how our journey takes us, but we see that fruit and fasting is the, is the key to reverse. Yeah. yeah, and I believe that too. And I'm, I'm not focused too much on building muscle. I'm just going to continue to work out. And if I lose some strength, because I feel like if I push my digestive system too hard by wanting to consume like 4,000 calories, even of just fruit, I feel like that's not going to be ideal for me right now. So I'm just going to eat enough to satiation and just not focus so much on being this alpha male. Like I don't, we get brainwashed all the men to where it's like, you should be this huge guy. And it's like, is that the most comfortable thing? Like, it, I feel amazing now being so much lighter. And since I do calisthenics, it's only body weight exercises. I'm enjoying my exercises much more now that I'm lighter and it's fun. <laughs> so like, I don't need to, hard be... to be heavy. It really is. It's hard to be heavy. It doesn't make you feel nice. It's just more of an ego thing, you know? And that was a great thing for me moving away to Spain because that's kind of when I detached away from any type of physical training. And I, I, probably lost i don't know 100 pounds of muscle you know and it was a great thing for the overcoming of the mind because it doesn't matter what anyone thinks about you and if you think about what other people are thinking about you it's hard enough to think for yourself let alone other people so you're just living in a cycle of mind pain yeah. full of illusion acidity <laughs> yeah yeah all right. Is there any direction you wanted to head in? I still have a bunch of areas, but if I mean, you, wanna... you carry on with your direction. We are fine to go on. I didn't know we touched most things. A bit of... We touched on instinct, fortification, muscles, glucose, protein, garlic, onion, and chili. I mean, how do you feel about those three things? I know a lot of people yeah. have them as a standard staple within food for flavoring, but 
How do you feel? I feel like they're too harsh and they're just so noticeable when you eat. When I eat garlic, like I taste it and it's not good for hours after. And it's like, that's harsh. And I, I can see that it probably has medicinal value. It's just using it as a flavoring. I probably wouldn't be doing that very often. It's, a, it's a, one of the nervous system stimulants and it's neurotoxic to the brain. And when you ingest garlic, it actually stops the communication between the hemispheres as well and keeps you in, uh, keeps you out of the alpha wave uh, brainwave system. So this is your calming state. Through meditation, you kind of find these alpha waves and they're very relaxing. So you'll find people that predominantly eat a uh, garlic-based diet are very, uh, or have a ten tendency to be more aggressive than somebody that doesn't. And if you look at yogis past the time, they were, you know, not ingesting garlic because of this very reason. Also, to the bloodstream. I mean, Al Capone used to rub his bullets in garlic. There's uh, rumors that the First and Second World War would also rub it in because it's poisonous in the blood. I mean, you know, like mm -hmm. snake venom, you can eat it, but if it goes into the bloodstream, it's very dangerous. But also, it was used to clean um like scalpels you know so it, it works in different ways and i and i feel a remedy in ancient times was mixing it with onion and they used to put it on snake bites to kind of remedy it like that. pulls the toxins out so it is a medicinal uh, there's medicinal benefits to lots of plants but um whether we should ingest them uh... yeah i think ten thousand brain cells are killed every time you consume a small amount of garlic as well so i mean it's 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 not something that I am bothered about. Highly by. stimulating. Yeah. By... We just don't consume it. It just it, 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 it exacerbates lymphatic system. You feel it after being away from it. Tonsillitis yeah. feels yeah. the next day after having it. Yeah, there are definitely like, I know the carnivores, their main thing about vegan diets is the anti-nutrients and the toxic compounds in some plants but like fruits are the lowest in that vegetables do have some anti-nutrients but like yeah the garlic like these are obvious things that are just too spicy but you also say ginger causes inflammation did you not i uh, yeah if you sit with ginger you'll feel inflammation in the intestine okay it's okay to add these things to your food if you're trying to heal it has a it has a liver toxicity to it, you know. So if you just go into the studies, you'll find it is toxic to the liver. It's not something which is going to be of great benefit when you're trying to heal chronic diseases, but it's not something you need to really be too worried about. Knowing the kingdom of food, it's still a root and it's under the ground. You know, things that are really given to us effortlessly and drop themselves are fruit. And they're per perfectly cooked by our beautiful sun. <laughs> Yeah, I do love a little bit of ginger in my orange juice. It is yeah, you don't nice. have to abstain from things like that, you know, but it's just something if you're looking for ultimate purity. Same with uh, turmeric. It's this liver toxicity, you know. People have actually had, uh, I think they've died of toxicity of turmeric mm. and curcumin toxicity, but it's not something we need to be too worried about. Would you say the ultimate healing protocol, if somebody wanted to just benefit the most and heal the fastest it's a hundred percent fruit with fasting as well probably oh you have to take away everything and do everything yourself then move to a whole food plant-based diet and then from the whole food plant-based diet start eliminating cooked food and move into more predominantly raw and spend a couple of weeks on raw eliminate things like the uh the lettuce leaves and spinach and things like this until you get to the fruit base stay on a fruit-based diet and then intermittently do your juice fasting and water fasting. Experience this until you grow the fasting muscle. And if you're still not healed, if you have something like uh, like AIDS or something like this, then the protocol I said earlier is going to be beneficial. For mm -hmm. that. Okay. Teeth issues on fruit. A lot of people seem to get sensitivity. Is that yeah. like you mentioned the vitamin D before? Yeah. Deficiencies is that, are yeah, I, I find down to just before we get into it, it's like, I wonder, is it the sugar or the acid of these fruits of like unripe fruits? I feel it's the acid because yeah. when I have things like sauerkraut, very sour and acidic and vinegars and 
too much tomatoes. That's when I get the sensitivity, but mm -hmm. I seem to be fine eating dates and dried fruits. And that seems to be like the worst for teeth, but I'm not having the issues. So, I mean, all we can say is what, what we've experienced ourselves. And I think probably eight months to a year, was it? I didn't I didn't clean my teeth for eight months to a year and I was swilling orange juice around my teeth every time I drank it that was a few times a day just for this test and I didn't notice anything you yeah. know and I would say that the demineralization happens from acidosis for one so when your body's trying to alka or buffer this with alkalinity it depletes your body's minerals so you'll find you're losing bone density and the density of your teeth so vitamin D deficiencies will also lead to negative impact on your teeth because your body then can't absorb this calcium, which is, I mean, even in India, there was a study and they found between 90 and 99% of Indians were deficient in vitamin D themselves because you're indoors, you know, they clove up when they're outside because of the heat. So it's, it's, it's not something that's uh, rare, it's very common. Um, so it's all de dependent on the individual. I mean, also you could have a really imbalance of bacteria within the mouth, which then is eating away at the teeth. But the mouth, uh, the mouth and the gut are very strongly linked. Mm. So you know, if you're experiencing gut problems like um, the colitis, the IBS type mm. symptoms, is very heavily linked to the mouth bacteria as well. So um, that's something that, you know, we can look at as well. On a, MMS, a MMS, yeah, MMS, Miracle Mineral Solution. I've heard of it, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's very good. It is such an oxygenator. It kills the pathogens. So Especially in the mouth. If you brush your teeth with that, you can align your, your mouth bacteria very quickly. And as long as you're not really tricking it too much, it'll stay balanced. Do you get um, bleeding gums with it as well, Casey? Or... Yeah, sometimes yeah. when I floss yeah so that's a, another sign of like the oral health and it really does get passed down into the stomach so really make sure you chew your food well um, get the saliva enzymes on it and um, how, we definitely recommend always having the blood test just to see where you're at with regards to mm. um, mm -hmm. health within like the inner health and um, go yeah i think it's predominantly that you know some people eat a lot of sugar and that does decay the teeth not i wouldn't say fruit sugar does if you look at a, a, a gorilla or a monkey they don't clean their teeth and they seem to be fine even though they're not living in the perfect environment where they're picking fruit off the trees themselves but you know it's probably down to that deficiency yeah, yeah. you know what eludes me i just always have yellow teeth. I cannot whiten them for the life of me. How is that an internal thing? I feel like it's internal or something. Like if what, when won't... did it first happen? Always. Like when I was a kid, I had that. Hmm. Like ten I years think old. Like it's probably harder to remedy because of the impact of the childhood teeth. Hmm. You know, um, so they kind of stay with you. We we use a clay base with carbon, uh, coconut oil, and bicarbonate to clean our teeth. What do you okay. currently use? I just made a thing. It's funny. I was using nothing but my own urine for a bit, brushing my teeth with my urine because I heard somebody do it, and I was like, this is not working at all. Why would it? Why would yellow urine turn my teeth white? But mm. all right. We had to see for acid. ourselves. <laughs> yeah. No, so don't do that. I don't recommend that. Um, yeah, I'm making just coconut oil, baking soda, neem, and clove oil. Tasty. Okay. Add a bit of um charcoal, activated charcoal in that too. That would be good. Okay. Yeah, it's so just something like I've tried even chemical like crest white strips just out of curiosity to see if mm -hmm. something would get it off but it, they just never seem to so maybe i'm stuck with that maybe like the with the oral health as well like um you know when they've got uh the bacteria and the mice when that's imbalanced then you'll find that it doesn't uh decay the teeth at all so looking at the oral health in in general is a very good idea because um like josh was saying with the fms when you clean your teeth with it 
and it oxygenates this area here that we're suffering with and it really does help doesn't all it? the pathogens yeah that they just die off because it's too high in oxygen so it's probably something that you might you know look at especially if the gums are slightly bleeding as well when you are flossing because i found that that helped so yeah. much 22.4 percent sodium chloride and four percent hcl is the best and then you just put five drops in a bit of water and you clean your teeth and swell out with that three times a day for about five six days and maybe do that once a month and see what happens mm. okay mm. we'll give that a go we had um, a good benefits with that so yeah it's good to try everything you know we'll talk about urine therapy a bit later on did you have anything uh leading on to that no not urine therapy what you were already speaking of sorry um no i was gonna transition into something else but if you want to go for no it. you carry on we were just talking about the garlic onion and chili aspect i think and then we deviate into that but all three of them are nervous system stimulants so they pick you up to a certain level and then you got to drop so you'll find yourself having an instability in mood um but also i feel they are also toxic to the body you know okay. i feel yeah, like i don't want to consume anything that is toxic and you mentioned himalayan salt i thought salt was bad isn't salt an inorganic mineral and we can't use it at all <laughs> you know i think all animals create if even if you watch nature they tend to walk towards salt and lick it and you kind of like the way that it tastes naturally i want to lick feel... it right now yeah <laughs> we'll go get some we'll wait <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no like i really Danger enjoy microphone salty... for, uh, salt lick. <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah no, i think a tasty thing yeah, we have such demineralization within our, our 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 food system that I I feel like your body will take what it wants and be able to excrete what it doesn't from that. So I I do say don't skimp on it, you know, enjoy it, have it because it's not the worst thing in the world, you know. It's not MSG, it's none of these things. Um, when you're healing, if you're water fasting, definitely add it to your water if it's over four or five days. Keep your electrolytes balanced. Um, obviously we were speaking about uh, distilled water earlier on you know distilled water itself is kind of neutral and you, it doesn't even conduct electricity so just adding a small amount of salt in it does allow it to conduct electricity it's, it's, it's a diamagnetic substance and we put silver into our water or copper because that contains a positive electric charge but it's also negatively magnetized which then allows all the pathogens that are charged electrically negatively to then remedy and be put out of the body. So salt is a good thing, basically. I would say you if... mentioned the sea, um, the Irish sea moss or the kombu as well yeah. into the water because it's so good to mineralize in that aspect. Salt just dehydrates you, you know. If you put it onto a slug, it will kill it, you know. In the intestines, it's going to dehydrate them. So just be cautious of it. You don't need excessive amounts. And if you have perfectly grown fruit from your garden, you'd have everything you need. And you wouldn't and want salt on your fruit. No. Do you recommend Himalayan salt over a Celtic sea salt, or are they all basically? I just say the Himalayan salt is more of an ancient bed, free from any type of chemicals, residuals, chemtrails anything like that so i would just prefer that for me okay i am very curious about your skincare routine because i've heard you say just lemon or just baking soda i'm here dousing myself in my own urine it's not working <laughs> what can i do i just want to i just want clear skin because it's so i think important if you want to inspire people like i see you two both glowing perfect skin it's like yes they're on the right path and it's like i'm on that path too and <laughs> i'm not radiating that so it's like so look, annoying it looks quite good today casey it's just not got bad it's just yeah. still these Changing. like tiny bumps and the body's yeah. doing what it needs to do so thank thank them for doing their job but i feel like now if you stay stable on this path with no protein powders, none of these things, it's just going to clear up and be fine. Mm -hmm. I, uh, we, we changed our clothes, you know, a long time ago, we washed with the vinegar and bicarb within the washing machines. We wash ourselves with bicarb, lemon, 
lovely real nature scrub um and then every so often we just wash uh we would dry ourselves and then apply coconut oil to the skin but not every time because our body likes to breathe and have, have a relationship with the, the air and water so yeah essentially that really i don't i don't tend to really wash my face like separately if i was in the shower i wash it but it's not really a a focal point because it's just always been quite nice mm -hmm. mm. so like if i was to use lemon should i use lemon like just I how would you do it in your hand squeeze the lemon okay and rub it in you can wash your face it's nice abrasive and with the body you just slightly get your hand wet apply the bicarb for this cream rub it over your body stay away from the water cut the lemon in half and rub it with the bicarb and it foams up nicely and then i feel like that's a great way to wash also it's anti-fungal do that daily though so um i don't know about you casey but we don't shower daily <laughs> okay <laughs> yeah i do um, just out of habit i like yeah. the warmth it's like oh yeah sure. yeah we used to um we lived in a camper van for a few yeah, years so stopped. it was a tree <laughs> so um we do have like i'd probably say i probably shower once every three days okay I don't smell yeah. there's like you really don't smell when you consume food like this I, i'm sure you've even experienced going to the bathroom and on your fruit-based diet and it's Smells as wonderful as it did going in. Oh Nearly. <laughs> yeah, sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Not, the, um, not when you experience the mucoid <laughs> pack. <laughs> oh, that's another thing you should talk about. Yeah, yeah we yeah. probably should. Because I, I did that Zen cleanse again and got more mucoid plaque out. And it's now I doubt it because I, I feel like most of that was the product, but I feel like it benefited me. So like the pain I had for 30 years is gone after doing that. So I'm like, okay, that removed something. It just, it wasn't as dramatic as I was hoping. Like, oh, this giant piece was in me for 15 years. <laughs> it's definitely the product for one, you know, that you see coming out. There's no doubt that it goes through the colon and as it gelatifies, it could probably hold on to things that may be stuck in, in the outer wall. But when you consume food like this for such a long period of time, it's naturally going to clean itself and, and come out. So some of our our family, our ex-family members, they they do like a water fast for an extended period of time and, and do enemas as well. And then doing the enemas until your body's absolutely completely clear. So you're water fasting for a period of time and there's nothing in there and you feel so light and so fresh and you know everything then is being restored. Um I would personally say that once a month, just do a salt flush. Mm. Mm. Allow your body to, you know, trick itself with the salt as to digest it and help pour things through and keep doing that until your elimination is clear. And this is going to aid in pulling things out from your body in a more natural way. Um, but with the water as well, have it, you know, when it comes out of the distiller, it's kind of like warm. Mm -hmm. you know uh type just above room temperature i guess this is like the optimum heat that you'd have yeah the water, that kind of temperature so that it's not causing any stress on the body now, a lot of uh beings like the water like cold in the fridge but it can cause a lot of um trauma to the body as well yeah. as it's uh going through so make sure it's like not a really cold temperature Mm, when okay. you're having the water just when it's freshly distilled it yeah it's, really it's a good. nice temperature mm. if you get used to that okay. but the colon cleanse so yeah i i seen a couple colon cleanses one is your one being the zen and another one called so easy have you heard of the so yeah easy i've heard of that one that three day one um it's so just excessive you know if someone's looking at it i i feel like depending on the level of dehydration in the body is the darker it comes out and you were quite hydrated so it was quite brownie mm -hmm. um, it's quite when when you don't really go deep into the research that's essentially what people are looking for what you see every time you take it and they feel great relief there's a great placebo effect in the body and uh, they go on and they they're said it's best to do it four times a year which is a very expensive habit yeah but it does hold on to some of the matter that's in your body. And 
if you experience like you did some relief from that kind of like a heavy feeling that blockage feeling then you know you know that something's moved or happened within so mm. if you've experienced relief from that then that's uh if you have relief then have a belief <laughs> yeah no i was saying like people always say oh that's just the placebo effect and i was like good anything you can yeah. do to initiate the placebo effect is the most powerful thing you have so that's the most important thing in modern day medicine isn't it <laughs> <laughs> yeah it, it is, is. No, the most powerful yeah. yeah no i benefited greatly from it it's just not what i thought like the first one i was almost carnivore when i did that zen cleanse and it came out and it was horrible smelling i was like wow and then this next one I just did, I was fruitarian for almost a month and it barely smelt bad. It wasn't in me for 20 years. Like that was not yeah. old material. It was, yeah. but it's still like it, I felt good from it. So I don't know. Yeah, it's great. And your affiliate link is in the just down below. <laughs> Five, <laughs> 5%, 5 off with code <laughs> vegetable police. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Some things are just, yeah like i believed in it so much it like it was life-changing like i'm back on the raw vegan diet because of that cleanse in my opinion like i was as soon as i did that it was my belief that i thought i just released a piece that was 20 years old and i was like oh, maybe i can do a raw vegan diet now and then i just could <laughs> it seemed like i could do it and so that's why i'm back here so even if it Amazing. doesn't do what it said it does it it, it served, served its purpose in my life yeah, yeah. <laughs> oxalates are those a thing is that a problem i get a lot of people saying oh oxalates are everything that's why you should cook your vegetables steam them okay and soak your nuts and then you can roast them even further to just take away a bit more so yeah, I think the the nature of vegetables and things like that, you you should definitely steam them for the best. And is it possible though? Like um, carnivores often get a lot of symptoms on the carnivore diet, and they say it's oxalate dumping. It depends. Everyone's so individual on that, you know. Depending on where they are, what they were coming from, what type of lifestyle they had before. So it's really hard to say, but I mean, I it, feel it's like it's uric acid accumulating, if anything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think everyone's so individual on that type of journey. You have to kind of know the background to be able to say, but even, even with the, the vegetation, the vegetable kingdom, nuts and seeds and meat, I feel like they do need a, a sense of cooking. I really do. And if you okay. steam them and you eat them raw and just try this, you'll feel so very different. And you can absolutely, absolutely actually absorb more minerals when they're steamed than you would if they weren't. Mm -hmm. Okay. Looked like you wanted to hold up a, hmm? a chart or something. Oh, no, it was just I just wiped it clean. Okay, I, I thought you showed you that it was clean. Something. Okay. <laughs> I do feel that the... um. The reason that, uh, you know, in the media at the moment, a lot of vegans are going back to meat or carnival or switching because of the deficiencies that are, that are there at the moment, because they're not necessarily understanding that aspect of the vegan diet. Like we explained before, they feel like they should be purely just on fruit or mm. whole food without that supplementation they're getting quite sick so they feel like okay i need this to help me it's usually like a three to six year period and then people start to go down but it can be sooner mm -hmm. yeah i see that a lot so i've just tried to think of as many problems as people report to me when going raw vegan as possible and we've tackled like most of them i think um one is just excessive urination it seems they're just peeing all the time is that just normal you get used to it on a high fruit diet because you're taking in all this water and it's this constant cycling effect i 
I would say that sometimes when people are having high fruit diets and they're also putting salt into some type of food that they're consuming, they're hydrating and then flushing and dumping out. So it seems like you have an excessive urine. So if you're kind of on a really fruit diet, like just fruit, I don't find this too excessive in urination. Do you or have you experienced that? And I would say it's more to do with what's happening as well as the fruit. So if you yeah, I feel like it still happens and there's times where it doesn't, but I haven't pinpointed why that is. Well, your body obviously fluctuates with the level of water it retains. And if you've got a lot of excess water, you're going to be having a lot of excess urine. And most of the time, previously to this type of diet, you're kind of dehydrated a lot of the time anyway. And this is why you don't need to drink water at all on a fruit-based diet, really, because you don't. You know, the water is... I would prefer to get my water from the fruit than any other source, even distilled, because it's perfect. Mm -hmm. And there's no, I wouldn't say there's no real reason unless someone's got an underlying health issue, but it is, you know, it's, it's a common thing. But in my experience, it's when I have fruit all day and then like a saltier meal in the evening. And then I wee three liters at night in bed, you know, yeah. not okay. in the bed. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I get that too. <laughs> Speaking of pee we might as well just briefly go there <laughs> is it bad like dr morse says we filter toxins out of our kidneys is that true or like a lot of people report benefits from urine therapy yeah i think a lot of the time there's a few shifts around the same time people turn to urine so they experience a, a healthier thing, even if they're fasting on your urine um one of the first books I read probably was when I was about 18 years old, about 18 years ago, was Your Own Perfect Medicine. Yeah. There's lots of great studies in there, you know, and essentially what comes out your urine is not waste products, it's like amino acids and vitamins that aren't needed in the body at that particular time. So, I mean, it's difficult to say because if people have come to us and they try urine therapy, you're not getting the results so you would if you were juice fasting, you know, but some skin ailments and things like this, applying urine, it does cause your skin to, you know, be better. Like the the amniotic fluid of a baby is essentially urine. You know, Victorians used to take urine baths. So it does have the softening of the skin. They say, I haven't experienced this, but you know, if you get stung by a snake, a bit by a snake, or that the anti-venom will be excreted in your urine, which is yeah, a possibility. Yeah. Them. But I mean, it's so hard to really give true science to it because it's, it's not in, in the reach of a real scientific study. So how do you feel? Do you feel like you felt better? Could it be placebo? And how do you feel on juice fasting other than we fasting, let's say? Yeah, so I've done three urine fasts now i did a 36 hour one then i jumped into a 64 hour one and i just did an 89 hour one so nothing but urine and distilled water and my forehead was like really freaking out with eczema and on my second urine fast that just calmed so much like it, i felt like it was quite beneficial and i feel like it's it's maybe like my, I look at it like it's my own animal product that I'm getting nutrients that aren't really in plant, even though they were in my body already. I feel Ooh. like it's doing something. And I just like, I've read so many testimonials on it and people just seem to believe I don't want to be a part of it though. Like it's a, it's a gross thing. Like I get it. I, mm. I put like aged urine in my hair. I smell like a goat at night. And then I wash Bro. it off in the morning with fresh urine. That doesn't help. <laughs> That's barely better. Yeah. yeah. And it's just, so I think stupid. if you did a water fast with the eczema, you probably would have received, you know, the benefits the same. I think yeah, it's probably. just abstaining from matter. But again, it's your own journey. You have to experience it. But in my experience, it, it's, it's not the magic, you know, that like it was said to be in the book. Okay. You know, 
Yeah, it just gets people to fast kind of and avoid yeah. the things that were causing them problems. It's not yeah. necessarily. Yeah, fasting is, fasting is so purifying, so purifying. If you do have eczema, you have anything like that, just fast for a few days and it'll get better. Mm -hmm. You know, we had um, a long time ago, someone we were helping with MS. And we just, I mean, they were bad with it. We started introducing a whole food diet to them. About five or six days later, they didn't have any symptoms of it. And they were having their energy and th and they couldn't maintain it. But it's just this simple, you know, just change the way that you consume into a more natural lifestyle. And if you've gone to a point of fruit, you need to go to a point of fasting and, and vice versa, really. And these hidden parasites that lay within a lymphatic system, they just need to be treated. Otherwise, things keep resurfacing. But apart from that, I think the cure is found in fruit and fasting for nearly everything. Yeah, I believe it. So do you have a direction you want to go? Anything left? Um, I think we covered everything. I mean, the gallbladder flush was another thing that I put down because you experienced... Did you do the, the oil-based flush? Yeah. So that was also a Zen cleanse thing. And it's different because they have the apple enzyme. So you don't have to like consume apples for a week and drink the magnesium. Like it's all in the enzymes. But then, yeah, it's basically half a cup of oil with lemon at night. And I just, I felt like that was too harsh. Like that really ruined me. I woke up at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m super nauseous i almost threw up and didn't sleep at all that night and i was exhausted and there, i feel like the liver flushing community gets it's almost like a cult where you have to keep doing them and they stay doing them over and it's like oh you you haven't done 90 liver flushes yet you're not even started yet like they just keep going over and over and some get relief from it so like but like people get relief from anything almost like there's a lot of protocols that give you relief it doesn't mean it's doing what you think it's doing i know i feel like it's the cause of the things that you're excreting out you know and the body's process is dealing with fat and excess cholesterol um it causes calcification and you're essentially delivering this product from the oil our body doesn't want oil it's uh water, mix well <laughs> water and oil don't mix anything oil based is dealt with straight away by your lymphatic system as an elimination so to me it just isn't right for the body to take uh, the best thing you can do is have the least calcif uh, calcification foods and uh, live live in a, a higher state of uh, uh, balance neutrality you know we say we need to move towards alkaline diets but i would prefer the true meaning to be like we need to eat foods that don't cause acidity and are alkalizing within the body but the body likes to be neutral so we don't want to be one way or the other we need to kind of be neutral so and you'll be fine liver gallbladder everything will just naturally eliminate as it needs to slow and steady as you transition on a, on a cleaner food diet but for me, no, definitely not. Okay. Definitely not a good cleanse. More of a retox, I would say. Yeah, probably. That's what it felt like. I didn't feel much benefit from it. Here's an interesting one. When I watch you, I watched that debate you had with the carnivore guy. It wasn't a debate, it was a conversation. And you're so non judgmental towards others. Like it's so amazing. The way, oh, my battery just died. Can you not see me? I can hear you still. Yeah. We've okay. got a picture of your face, but the mouth isn't moving. <laughs> okay. There One second. Go. Let me just get this battery. But yeah, the you just have no judgment to it. Like if someone's eating meat, that's what they're eating. And that's where they are in their journey and whatever. If they're eating cooked vegan foods it's like okay like and i find a lot of vegans judge the meat eaters and then the meat eaters are judging the vegans and it's this big judgment fest where like how do we you spoke, yeah we spoke about the acidity that that causes the being um before because 
if you those that judge shall be judged first uh we have you back <laughs> there we go um yeah so when you judge another being for their journey or their truth you end up putting that issue on yourself mm -hmm. because you're creating the drama within your being well they should be doing this or it should be like this it has to be like that you're putting all of those barriers within your being creating that unstable environment again so therefore not affecting them so much but affecting your own being so that judgment will just come back on you tenfold yeah you have more of a chance of giving people an energy to look into by being that way and essentially all that's happening is the ego has found more power in its belief that it has a higher form of knowledge than somebody else. And in that higher form of knowledge, it gets self-gratification and it also has a desire which causes suffering to change others. And trying to change others because the ego or you know better is essentially just going to lead to your suffering. And also the other will feel a form of control and it will separate that energy. So you will find that it doesn't actually serve a purpose and be in such a way it actually does the opposite and it makes the other person want to do carnivore, uh, be a carnivore even more or eat bad food even more. And I don't suffer because of anyone else's choices. Mm -hmm. You know, that is a ridiculous choice to make when I have that power. So everyone has the, the freedom to do what they wish. And I think that is the most important thing on this journey is it's it, their true will. If you, like, you have to have, you've got love for all beings and all life and all of this beauty that surrounds us and then you have will your true will others have their own will and if their will is to be on that path then that's beautiful for them at that moment that's perfect and and what we do is just uh, give advice based on of our own experiences and what we find as we go through this journey and if others gravitate towards it and vibe with it then they can come and share their experiences with us but that equally has a same, like with our families, they might not be aligned to the same journey as ours, but we still have that love and that respect for their own personal will. And we can still be in the same room as them, even if they're eating something that we might might not. It's even to. nicer to be around people that are unconscious in their actions than it is about people who believe they're conscious. Mm. You know, spiritual arrogance as such, because they have so many opinions and they believe that they're right in, uh, in their own way. Uh, and it's not essentially a nice energy field to be around and you know when michelle was saying about families my my mother father brother and sister all had chronic illnesses and my father was diabetic for 37 years really bad his feet were rotting away and things like this my sister was uh, had chronic fatigue and she was in bed and in a wheelchair for 14 years my brother had uh, skin cancer on his nose and my mother had cervical cancer and at the same time, they all decided to embark on a journey together and they're all better. Because Josh was the only one that was <laughs> uh, well enough to advise. So, <laughs> and they all um, came on board and embraced it. And now not one of them has got any of those diseases anymore. So we see from our own truths that this is the healing path that needs to happen within. But we never force and we never push the idea or the opinion on others and mm. if they gravitate towards what we are experiencing and what we journey through then mm -hmm. that's great we'll be there to help guide and support as in the ancient love. art of magic do that will or do that which you will and if you don't you suffer in thought if you have an idea or a will you must apply yourself to experience that because this is leading you through intuition to somewhere higher and greater a great teaching mm. Yeah, that's great because, you know, a lot of people suffer with chronic illnesses and you have to put yourself in their shoes because someone who's never been sick might not know what it's like to really have your life energy sucked right out of you and have almost no will to live. And if that type of person can find relief in a diet that's different than yours, like you have to be okay with that. And yeah. Yeah, it's I respect anybody who's like doing what they think is right to heal the body because suffering sucks. Like it's okay. it's not fun. Just taking action, I think that's one of the most important things instead of being idle and, you know, just listening to the dialogue inside the head. 
And there's a difference between suffering and experience and pain. You know, suffering, I would say, is only found in thought and having a desire to not be experiencing it or wishing I wasn't experiencing it and these type of things that come on with the ego. Because truly you can actually suffer if you don't engage in thought because things are just that they are and they are experienced momentarily. So if I could give any type of advice is, you know, do what's right for you and and try to listen to that inner dialogue that's going on and that war with inside your own mind. And the perception that you have is relative to that which you've experienced and isn't necessarily true. We can change the way we see the world at any given moment. And also our DNA in each moment, even our thought, the DNA is changed. So we have the ability to change so much within ourselves. So the journey is a long road for some, a shorter for others, but it each leads to the same path, which is liberation and freedom. What we find is a, a good kind of practice if you do need to take those steps towards that is practicing the virtues um, and, you know, patience with your journey. You know, they say patience is a virtue. It really is because if you don't invest a little bit of action and energy into something that you know is true, then this will never happen for you. So your intention behind that action is there initially. And if you don't follow that path of your truth, then it will still lead to suffering mm -hmm. because you are not actioning that which you know is true. So being virtuous in your actions, diligence and patience with any journey, you know, you need to give it a little bit of your time, patience and energy to achieve that, the consistency of Stop it. Stop living in the future or the past yeah, and just try to be here and very now. Very present and very like accepting of, okay, this is the journey that I'm going to embark mm. on and I'm going to give it a real, you know, how long did it take me to get sick? Years of eating this stuff that is causing me problems and pain and then how long am I going to invest in it to actually know that this is going to work for me? And if it's two weeks or three weeks and then you give up because it's hard because you're experiencing some pain and problems, then maybe this isn't the journey for you. But if you're willing, willing to give it a bit of your energy and patience, then you should thrive. That's where the transition comes in, because if you do it slow and steadily, you just feel better and better and better and you recognize, you know, what's not for you. So we just try not to suffer along the journeys. And as me said, patience, you just look at patience and you see what comes from being patient. You have an idea about the situation that you're in should be different. So you're in a traffic jam and you're really getting stressed and anger is arising because the idea that you have is this shouldn't be happening. And all this is within inside your head. So you just accept it and realize that, you know, I'm actually having suffering with inside of me when nothing's going on and I'm the cause of this. So the, the slight change in your perception is a great liberation. Acceptance. And surrender thought and you're free from them. Just pure experience. Everything is perfect. As are you, brother. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you both. Where's your journey next then? You're on a fruit-based diet? Yep, on a fruit-based diet and just doing more fasting i was gonna get into dry fasting but now i'm not so sure that's gonna happen i don't know i just i found this guy who does like 20 day dry fasts and i was like wow and he's having very interesting spiritual experiences but i do mm -hmm. want to kind of redeem myself for my 21 day water fast and not break it with raw eggs this time and like mm -hmm. kind of get more into fasting and just continue to heal the body and hopefully just heal the body eventually and then teach other i feel like i'm stuck in that perpetual having something to heal mode always so I'd, I'd like to overcome that it's been a fun journey figuring out this stuff and making wacky videos about it but like i want to be the guy now it's like okay i figured out this is what works for me and this will probably help you if you try it yeah. and start teaching more yeah i think you're doing a great thing and really if someone good. finds your videos now you've been through all of these different mm -hmm. experiments they can have a shortcut and hopefully this is the the peak of the mountain mm -hmm. and you maintain your health on this and then fall into a, a lifestyle that you choose to just remain balanced in 
patience mm-hmm. and consistency throughout any journey you know with, whether it be mind the body like the fitness journey even you can't mm-hmm. um the learning goes with the journey doesn't it and that's how you grow and learn through any journey so just be consistent with your truth yeah. the wisdom comes from your experience and that's what's so powerful so you you are and will remain and continue to grow in wisdom as you take a walk on your own journey which is profound because it's not just chat you know it's not just opinion it's real facts and it's been very great communicating with you and having the ability to to see your journey because i know that you'll find it here in in the fruit but it's mm-hmm. lovely to watch your videos full of even though the facts are there and they're so fun and uh yeah keep doing you because it's it's great and it's you know teaching a lot of beings along the way that you know these are the the ways that you've tried and it's lovely to see that humor as well and it's great the controversy that comes out of it you know in the comments and (laughs) all these opinions yeah no it's interesting i just yeah i try to make it fun for people because being chronically sick can be so hard and if Mm. you can just laugh your way through it and see someone else is struggling too it's like okay Mm. but i'm tired of being the guy struggling here to comfort you we're done with that (laughs) (laughs) so how are you feeling now are you feeling okay do you feel yeah i feel great it's just like my energy's good digestion's okay like i i choose to eat certain things like these nori and dried fig sushi like that's giving me gas so sometimes if i just ate fruit my digestion's pretty darn good Mm. and skin is almost perfect it's just like slight that's why i'm just trying to see if i'm missing something with the skincare routine or just have to i'm not digesting something but i don't think it's 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 mouth care what you're putting in your body's perfect it's just that over time when we don't align with what we should be eating or doing or being then unfortunately we suffer but Mm. this is the teaching that you've experienced and now you're on the journey of recovery and this it looks like you're actually thriving from it again so just one key thing is just do everything yourself if it Mm. comes in a packet just leave it for a, a extended period of time and you'll find that you know, you start to align yourself and any switch in your diet. So any switch, just very slow and steady, introduce things and then you'll be all right. If you just eat something in heavily, you're going to experience a digestive impact and some inflammation. And it's not necessarily, you might think, oh, that food's really bad for me and I can't do it, but it's just the fact that you introduced it too quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Listening to yourself. That's something I've developed And I feel like I'm finally starting to do it more. I've always been looking for like the guru who has all the answers to give me the perfect protocol. It's like, okay, but like you have to take pieces from everywhere and just listen to yourself and we're getting there. These mistakes make you, that's all, you know, but um, for anyone listening, who's looking for the perfect diet, take your journey, but try this one first. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Make yourself it. your own guru. Yeah. You're your, your own guru. Meet the real guru. The self mm-hmm. is special. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you both so much. I learned thank a lot. You. I'm I'm going to get a blood test and start. I'm going to find that lichen, vitamin D. And yeah. I, I do take B12 occasionally. So we'll see. We'll see if I'm deficient in these things and could be that before you have the blood test just if you've been taking oral just have like a week off and then go in and it should be a bit of a better reading for you yeah thanks to everyone who's listening to this thank you for your time and energy and keep doing what you're doing because you're an incredible being who we have utmost respect and love for and it's just a pleasure to to reach out and spend some time with you thank you so much I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end the recording here. So thank you, everyone, for your time, energy, and links will be in the description of ours, and affiliate links will be in the description of Casey's. Mm-hmm.